honestly, I, this sounds bad, but like kind of like no, like I just I will put something on yeah. and be like, can I rock this? And how can I rock it? Like how can I make this look popping? What shoes to throw on? What jewelry? What accessories? Um, the pants, just everything. I don't know. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Deficit Podcast. My name's Adam Aubrey, and we're here to bring you stimulation for your own deficit through good chats, life hacks, and everything in between. I'm joined today by Lachlan Wells, a independent digital media entrepreneur, designer, and costume worker in the film industry, along with a plethora of other wonderful excursions into business and fashion. He has decided to grace me with an appearance on this podcast <laughs> so we can get into all things stylish and scandalous. Lachlan? Hello. Tell me about yourself. Ooh, so what's up, y'all? My name is Lachlan Wells. Um, yeah, I do acting, modeling, TV. I have a clothing brand. What's the name of your brand? Lachlan Wells Brand. Cool. Named after me, of course. Yeah. And yeah, no, it's good. It's just passions that I've turned into careers. Wonderful. Which I love. That's mm -hmm. cool. Awesome. All right, well let's start off with let's let's see what what was Lachlan like? I want a picture of 5-year-old Lachlan. What was a what was a little kid Lachlan? Oh Lachlan's gosh. Like? Okay, so 5-year-old Lachlan was living on a farm on Vancouver Island. On a farm. Yeah. Okay, cool. In a small town called Crofton in between Duncan Duncan and Shamanus. Population 1,200. Wow. Okay. So it's real small. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody kind of knows everybody. Cool. Like, you can literally look from one end of the main road to the other end, where you enter, where you leave. It was so tiny. Wow. But yeah, no, I lived on a farm, had horses, goats, cows, oh, wow. sheep. Do you have, does, does any of your family still live out there? No. No? Do you no. ever go back to go see the old, like, you the know, old town folk? You know what's crazy is that, like, after my parents, like, separated, my dad moved over to Vancouver, and my mom stayed in Victoria, but they sold the house. And now when I go back to Crofton to, like, check it out and, like, reminisce, they literally, because it was such a big property, they turned it into, like, a bunch of, like, condos. Oh, so it doesn't no, even exist course. anymore. Yeah, it doesn't even exist. Oh, man. The gentrification is nigh. You know, it has 100%. been for so long. Mm -hmm. Brutal. So you were actually raised up around animals and stuff. Then. Yeah. Like, so do you do you find you still have a connection to creatures and stuff? Like, I love animals. Yeah. Animals are my, like, comfort. They're my joy. I wish we always had a pig because I love pigs. Pigs are lovely, yeah. But, yeah, no, I love all animals. And, yeah, they just, they bring me happiness and they bring me peace. And one thing I really wish that my parents did do was keep the house and the farm because I would appreciate it a lot more now as an adult yeah. than I did when I was, like, five or, like, Eight, you know, because I was like, get me out of here. We'd always go visit my grandmother in like West Van. So we'd yeah. always take the ferry. Then I'd come to this new big city and I was like, what is this? It's exciting and cool. Yeah, I was right like, I never now. want to go back to the island. But now, like living here in the city, I'm like, I really would have appreciated the yeah. farm life. A Once bit more. you get into the concrete jungles, you start to really appreciate what it is to have that kind of solitude. 100%. You know, like... It was just peaceful. You could hear the wind, you could see the trees, you had all the animals, so many acres. It was just, it was a blessing that I didn't realize it was at the time, but yeah. I was a kid. So it's like, how am I supposed to know? So when you were a kid, when you were like, you know, in that range, five to ten years old or mm. whatever. What what did were you a big like make believe kid? What were you doing for like oh. fun? What was little Lachlan doing? <laughs> I was a daydreamer. I always wanted to be in film. I always wanted to be on camera. Cool. But I just I would I don't know like what was I doing? I was just doing like concerts with my sing star, like taking the microphone and ripping off the cords so I could like walk around and sing to the audience. <laughs> cool. I would like cool. do little skits with my brother nice. and just. Yeah, make like mud pies in like the sheep's pen. It was really mud odd. pies, nice. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome. And, and the, yeah, sorry, and then ahead. I would, I loved hair, so I would always like do my sister's hair. Cool. Like if I wasn't gonna be like in film, I wanted to be like a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. Funny how I'm an adult and I'm none of those things. I'm not a hairdresser, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was just it was interesting. Like yeah, I don't know, it was cool. Cool, man. So like, um, did you? I actually before you came here, I did. You know, creep your Instagram profile. We love it. We love a creep. I did. I did see a, young, a younger Lachlan with a plethora of different hairstyles. Yeah. So I gotta ask yes. you, like, 
do you miss any of those? Like, because I, I see you're doing the clean cut look now, We're right? We're clean shaven. We're Mr. Clean but now. But I saw these lovely long braids you used to have. I met you with the braids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, but I think they were shorter back then. They probably were, yeah. Yeah, so w- do you ever, like, want to get back into that sort of style or <sighs> That's what? That's a good question. No. No? Because I feel like having my... So, like, in 2016, I, like, started my hair journey is what I'll call it. Mm-hmm. It went from 2016 to 2021. And I did everything from, like, long braids, short ones, dreadlocks, cornrows. And at that time, I wasn't really a confident person. Like, yes, from the outside looking in, I probably looked confident. But I really wasn't. And having that hair, I don't know what it did, but it made me such a confident person. Yeah. That's, it made me feel like the baddest bitch ever. I can relate to that deeply. When yeah. I was uh, younger, fresh out of high school, I, I met a... A good friend of mine, Dill, if you're watching this, hi. Shouts out. Dill Kashan haircuts. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got to be like a like a volunteer hair model for him. He said I got free haircuts as long as he got to do whatever he wanted with my hair. Oh. And like it, it ended up like I went from like just like what I am now essentially. Mm-hmm. I had like really boring kind of haircuts going on. And then Dill got a hold of me. And the first time I walked out of his his hair studio, I had a pitch black mohawk all my facial hair was dyed black Stop. emerald green fleck through it and like <laughs> hair tattoos galore and like it was Amazing. just amazing constant plays off of that kind of look for a while when i first got my hair dyed black though i didn't realize that it dyes the skin too right oh snap so like i had the thickest eyebrows you've ever seen like i look german oh, right no. now you would have thought i was straight out of portugal if you saw me <laughs> with that hair i it love wild. it yeah yeah but hair is, it, it's its crazy how much effect it has on somebody. Like 100%. It's like one of those sayings that used to say, like, you, you never feel as confident as you do when you walk out from a fresh haircut. Yes. And it's its so true. That's so true, because literally I got my hair, like, chopped yesterday, and I walked out of that salon, like, yeah. woo! Nice clean fade, yeah. Ready to take on the day. And I feel like, I don't know, like, when I get my hair cut, it just... I feel better. I look better. I feel like my face looks more tighter. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's all in the brain, I know. But it's just like... Hey, man. I thought it looked good. It, you know... Image it it if you can exude confidence with your image, then it will recycle into you. At least 100%. that's my theory, right? And I feel like with like with me when I had like the long hair, mm-hmm. that gave me a confidence that I will take on for the rest of my life. Like oh, I bet. Like that's just I never met. I used to have hair about down to here mm. until I got like old enough to tell my mom I want my own style of haircuts. <laughs> she was like a mullet f- super fan. It was okay. ridiculous. Oh man. Small town, west side, like out in Kamloops. It was like before oh everyone started moving there. It was gross. <laughs> but yeah, it, um, when you can actually make long hair look good, mm-hmm. it's a whole other ball game, man. Like they, there's so much more to deal with and so much more weight. And like it'll just go everywhere. But like I've seen how they do the braids in a couple of the like you know, black barber shops and stuff. Yeah. And like, fuck, that looks painful. You know, I always say like, when you get a fresh set of braids, it's yeah. like getting a facelift because your face is so tight after. And I'll never forget the first time my hairstylist, Talicia, did it. Like, she braided my hair because she first would just cornrow it. But then I was like, let's do braids. Yeah. So we did braids. I tell you, at the beginning, like it took like 10 hours, first of all. Oh but my then, gosh. yes. Oof. But then when I get home, I'm lying down and it just kills me i call her i'm bawling she's like take two extra strength tylenols you're gonna need them um yeah just like the pressure because my scalp was not used to like such weight because we added hair as well oh man so it was heavy but you get used to it and it looks good so it was worth it in the end they say it's worth the pain right that's 100 percent. beauty is pain let's uh let's try and jump back to i'm I'm, i want to keep asking about you as a little boy oh baby me yeah i feel like baby you was a fun kid to be around oh gosh what did you do like in in school did you go to a public school home school you did yeah Yeah. was it like out on the island i assume for it was so i went to elementary school on the island and then high school here in vancouver cool so Mm -hmm. did um were you uh did you have like kind of a misfit thing going on, or were you part of a clique? Like, what, what, what did very I much think your like own guy? Or child what? me. Yeah, I think I was just like I had I had a lot of energy. Cool. I had a lot of energy. I was very energetic, hence why my parents wanted to get me on like Ritalin because I yeah. just need to calm the hell down. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I didn't really have a misfit phase. I think. Well, my parents would disagree. Yeah, they would say I was like trouble. But <laughs> no, I think I was just any young kid like child really just yeah. in, excited by life excited by people around me and i just 
lived to the best. Yeah, I lived like to the best of my experiences, really. Yeah, okay, that's mm-hmm. cool. So you never had a, like, do you have any bullying experiences or anything? No. Like that? Good well, for actually, wait a minute. Okay, okay. We're I don't know if I can something. say this on podcast, but maybe you can bleep it out. I don't know. Do you guys bleep out? We're uncensored. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, So I'll never forget this. So I used to be friends with like this guy named Ryan Sam. And there's one other guy, I forget his name right now. And we were like really, really close. But then after some day, like like one day, they like turned against me. And we got into a physical altercation in the at the playground and they pushed me against the fence. Oh. And then you wanna know what they said to me? They're like, <laughs> like, why are black people afraid of chainsaws? Because when they rev it up, it goes, Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, God. I've heard that one. That's that, I can't, they said that to you. Yes. Wow. And I was like, what? Like maybe like seven at the time and i knew that like was a bad word so when they said that i was like (gasps) and i was like shattered i was like these were supposed to be my friends yeah kids kids don't understand exactly how severe racism is 100 percent, and it's because like they didn't i don't think they knew like we were so young like i didn't even know like my two best friends when i was younger one was indigenous and one was asian like i had no idea like they were just my friends Yeah, yeah i didn't see color i didn't see race yeah. So I feel like I can give them a slight benefit of, of the doubt, even though that was really fucked up. Yeah. But <laughs> how old were you when that happened? I think like seven. Oh fuck yeah! That, yeah. That's that's kids being fucking stupid. One hundred percent. So it's like I don't hold it against them, but did I'm their, just like, did their parents ever find out? I think so. I think I told my parents, and then they called theirs. Oh fuck it, good. Yeah, good. That, that I bet you they never called you that again. Fuck, no, they that's didn't. Ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, so God. I never really had any like bullying throughout like my entire like school like yep. journey in elementary school i just remember that one specific incident okay i yeah. mean that that's that's enough for a whole lifetime right there like honestly there, there, hey i remember it to this day at yeah. 27 yeah anybody goes like <laughs> and you know it's it it's kind of sad because like you know it's almost like a rite of passage like every kid goes through bullying right mm-hmm. but like to say that it's only hap- like you've only got one or two moments in your past that you can really remember like yeah. that's actually that's pretty decent. Like honestly, and even in high school, like growing up gay, like yeah. I wasn't bullied really. Really, people didn't like me, but they didn't like me because they didn't like my personality. They yeah. didn't like me not because I was gay. It was just because like, okay, he's annoying. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> They're still in the DMs after dark. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm so annoying. I'm so yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I guess that's. Uh, do you think that's because of the the culture that we grew up in out here in like Western Canada that like there's like less of an emphasis on like. Um, casting out people like that or like do you think we're more accept people are raised more accepting here or? i would say so yes yeah. at least from what i've experienced i can say yes i don't know i've grew up here in bc so it's like i don't know what people are going through in like other parts of canada yeah but from what i've seen people are pretty accepting yeah that's if good. they don't like fuck with you then they just kind of like leave you alone yeah. like i like from out of all my friends i can't remember anyone telling me like a specific like bully they've had and that taunted them for like years at school or yeah anything no that's that's that actually warms my heart that makes me yeah it makes me happy like kind of patriotic feeling about our province honestly yeah. like, that's kind of cool i know we've got a lot of issues over here but <laughs> quite a bit yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but to hear that like you know you managed to come up in a in an area where the bullying wasn't because of shit like race and sexuality. It was just yeah, and like I was like normally like me and my brother were like the only two black kids in the whole entire school, high school and elementary. Yeah. So that was our our elementary school too. We had three black kids and like were they all related? Yeah, they were. Uh, they were <laughs> from Haiti. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, yeah, adopted from Haiti. Um, my they were good friends of ours actually. My little brother graduated with one of them. The other one, okay. Christian, he ended up out on like the oil rigs way back. But he was a sturdy kid, man. He played football with us and stuff, Ooh. and just a beast of a boy. We love a beast of a boy. Oh, I bet you do, yeah. <laughs> He's got shoulders that make yours look small. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. shoot. Yeah, good people, man. <laughs> um, So did you do any, like, uh, drama programs or anything like that? Like, when I was a kid, like, not in elementary school. No, wait. Uh-huh. Wait. No, not wait in second. school, but I remember when my parents separated. Yeah. They were doing, like, at the Presentation House or whatever in North Vancouver. I think I was 11. Okay. And they were doing the play Hairspray. So, like, my dad knew I loved acting and I wanted to, like, do that as a career. So he goes down to the Presentation House and says, hey, I have a son. Like, he brought, like, a clip of, like, me reading, like, a script or something. And then they brought me in for an audition. And, yeah, I got to be in the hair. I got to be in the play Hairspray, but can you think of what part that I played? I'm trying. There's to. only one black character. Is that the part you got? To play? Yeah, of course. Oh, of course. I got yeah. Seaweed. His name was Seaweed, 
and I rocked it. Nice. But yeah, and then I remember when I was in high school, I wanted to do something like in my school they didn't offer drama. Mm-hmm. So my principal called the principal at like a sister school that was like kind of down the road, mm-hmm. and they got me to the drama program there. So oh. I maybe did like. A month, and then I left because I hated it. Oh, yeah. It was awful. It was yeah. awful. I was like, what am I doing here? Well, if anybody's good at creating superficial drama, it's the drama club, right? 100%. Yeah. So <laughs> I was just kind of like, yeah, it wasn't really for me. And at that time, I guess, yeah, I was already kind of working in film. So yeah. cool. I was just like acting already, so. Might as well just go with that. I was like, say, I don't need this yeah. drama. I don't need your extracurricular teenage <laughs> bullshit. Let me go exactly. to this. They pay me to go to this other right? stuff. Like, right? Know? Like, yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, you've mentioned your parents a few times. You said they, yeah. they're split up now? Yes. Were they, like, uh, were they, uh, I guess this is a bit of a weird way to structure this. I'm not going to ask you if they were good parents. Were they good parents? Um, You can ask that. Yeah? Were, were they, they good parents? parents? Um... <sighs> No, not really. No? Like, don't get me wrong. I love my parents. But my mom was bad cop. My dad was good cop. So when they separated, everybody came to live with my dad. And my mom was so strict. And after they divorced and we all went to go live with my dad, she did kind of, like, stop talking to us. Like, I think in the last, like, 18 years, maybe, I've seen her, like, 10 times. Oof. Yeah. 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 You know? And it's like, she has my number. Yeah. They but, just don't reach out. No. Yeah, that's tough. I've I've heard that from uh, a few friends of mine. Like, yeah, it, and it's like, and I'm adopted as well, so it's like maybe the connection. Oh, you the, are. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Do you know where like uh, your adoptive, your biological parents were? Or where oh, they're from? Yeah, they're in oh, Virginia. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fucking good barbecue. I have a good. Con- I have a good like connection and relationship with my birth father. That's good. He's like my twin. He's so cool. I think he's you showed coolest. me a picture of him once, yeah. actually. He did look a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's and, so dope. And so you go down to Virginia to go see your family once in a while there, too? I try to as much as I can. I haven't cool. been since 2021, but I still talk to my dad all the time. Cool. My other siblings out there, they call me Big Brother, which is nice because I was always the youngest here. Yeah. So it's interesting going from, like, baby brother to big brother. It's a very different dynamic. 100%. Yeah, like, absolutely. They look up to me and ask me stuff, and I'm just like, well, let me give you all my wisdom. Yeah. Gather <laughs> <laughs> yeah, around, children. <laughs> That's wicked. Very yeah, cool. but, like, no, like, to circle back, Back to, like, my parents. Um, I don't know. Like, I always say this. Like, my dad, like, he will always forever be my best friend. Mm-hmm. But he was never really a parent, if that makes sense. Like, he yeah. didn't know how to parent. He, Like, my parents, like, separated really early in, like, my, like, years, I guess. Like, I was, like, I think, like, eight or, no, no like, nine or ten when they separated. So he lost the structure portion of raising the kids. Mm-hmm. So after I lived with him, like, we were, like, smoking weed in the bedroom. He was going to the liquor store for us. Oh, yeah. You know? And Best it's kind of like, dad, yeah. as a kid, that's fun. But then when you get older and you kind of look at, like, how your other siblings turned out because they didn't have proper structure. Like, for me, I knew what I wanted my life to be. Mm-hmm. So even though I did go with the craziness and the fun of it all, I still knew, like, hey, get your shit together because you want to achieve these goals. Yeah. And it's just, it's interesting to see how my other siblings, how they've had really no rules or expectations from a parent, like, figure, an authority figure or anything, and they've just kind of, like, haven't done anything with themselves. So I always say this. My dad is an amazing person and a great friend, but he wasn't a father. Okay. But I will always love him, though. Yeah. He's, like, my best friend. Yeah. And I tell this to him, so it's not, like, shocking news. Well, and it's—I it's, find it to be, like, the biggest epiphany I had. I think it just happened when I turned 30 this year. I was kind of like, holy shit, I'm the same age as my dad when he had me. And I think about how I think about the world right now. Yeah. And I realize, like, if I had a child— like, I would just be me plus a child, right? Okay. And it's like, you know, as a dad, I can only imagine, like, they're just trying to be, like, what they think a good dad would be. And 100%. maybe that does mean being a friend. Like, my dad was the same way. He used to, like, when him and my mom split up, mm-hmm. it was him and I in a basement suite the day after. Like, okay. sleeping on foamies. We got our first set of cutlery from a pub down the street. Wow. And my dad rolled up a joint and smoked it with me in the basement suite. <laughs> and we just were like, well, where do we go from here, right? Uh-huh. And from that point forward, it was like, he's no longer, like, my dad. He's, like, my my best friend. He's but, a pal at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, as much as that was cool... You also kind of realize, like, fuck, you know, if they just, like, bucked up a bit more on, like, the actual fatherly stuff. Like, yeah. Like, how could that have benefited mm. me, right? 
But, but I can, I, you know what? For me, like, my dad will always say this. He's like, if he wasn't married to my mom at the time, mm-hmm. he wouldn't have had kids. He yeah. didn't want kids. He wanted to live his, not like bachelor life because he was married, but he wanted to like just live his life with his partner and he wanted to work and travel and do these things but she wanted kids and because she couldn't have kids they adopted kids and they didn't just adopt one or two they adopted five whoa yeah you have four siblings yeah holy crap yeah growing up on a farm with four okay so you actually had like the the authentic farm life childhood and we're all mixed race like i have a mexican brother he's from mexico city I have a sister that was from Georgia. She's Caucasian. I have a sister from Georgia. And then me and my brother were adopted together. We're from Virginia. Wow. Yeah. That must have been really... Did your parents, like, ever do, like, like try to help you guys experience, like, the cultures that you were from and stuff? Like, was there things You know like what? That? I say I'm the whitest black person you've ever met because <laughs> literally, no. Like, they don't. <laughs> I can't even do spice. Like Really? No. Not even just a little bit of cayenne? Mm, you so, know, so. in the last, like, two years, I've kind of gotten into spice. So, like, a spicy margarita or, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. hot wings. Oh, yeah. There you go. But, like, let's not push it, though. Like, I will be panting. Yeah, I, I hear you. And okay. everyone's like, oh, you're black. You should be able to do spice. I'm like, well, look where I was raised and then ask me, yeah, can yeah. you do spice? Yeah. No. My family defines mayonnaise as a legitimate spice. <laughs> it's, it, <you> know, <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> can't process anything more than that. Mm-hmm. So, like, when you go down to Virginia to see your family and stuff, what do they, do they give you any, heart, like, shit for that? No, I think my birth dad is just so happy to have me back in his life yep. that he, he's like, he'll do anything for me. Okay, He's cool. the sweetest. So they, they give an extra jug of milk for you in case the food's too spicy. 100%. Or, cool. like, his wife, my stepmom, Jody, be like, hey, so this is what we're having for dinner. Do you want anything else? What do you want? Like, she'll always be like, we can always have options for you. But, like, whatever she cooks is amazing, so... Cool. No worried. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. Okay, so I've I've been, you know, when I was moving on to I want to get into you and kind of like in the present now. Like oh I I you know, I was I've I've been associated with you on social media for a while. Yes. I see your videos come out. I I've yes. noticed a lot of them are very sexy. Yeah. One. <laughs> some of your some of your I'm on a boat in my little my speedo. Yes. Looking like a <laughs> like this, like a sexy black Fabio. You know, you know we're wild. trying. Yeah, yeah, and mm-hmm. but some of them are actually kind of deep. I noticed yeah. you, you have some real like emotional support advice and like yeah. just like general lifestyle advice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering what motivated you to to make that an aspect of your social media campaign as well, That's like a, my motivational things. Yeah, like yeah, you, I noticed you're kind of like it's almost like you're journaling, but also in a way that you're kind of you're you're framing it in a, in a way that you're telling people about how you're doing your day but in in a way that they can feel like it's advice at the same time of course like know? i call it talks with lock cool and it's just kind of like I'll just do a quick little video and just kind of like give like some good advice and some wisdom i don't know i think it all started after i fell back in love with one of my exes at the beginning of the year oh yeah and I, you know what's crazy is that I didn't love him at the time of our relationship, but I fell in love with him after our relationship. It, after he had yeah. moved on and he was with somebody else, and I was like, <gasps> and I was just like at the lowest. And I think like I started in June, and June I think was probably one of the hardest years of my life. I had so many things going wrong. Mm. Like I even died twice. What? <laughs> I did, yeah. What, what happened? Yeah, I died on June 30th. Yeah, sorry, I don't you don't have to tell me about that, but can I ask <laughs> about it? Is that Um yeah, yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah. Um how did it What was the question? Yeah, I was just asking about your life, your your uh life advice or yeah, your your little Okay, so I I will dive into the dying after. Okay. But yeah. I think just going through a, such like a heartbreak. Mm-hmm. Even though I wasn't even with the person. So it was a heartbreak. It wasn't a breakup. And those things mm-hmm. are very different. A yeah. breakup and a heartbreak. I was going through heartbreak and I was just kind of like, damn, I was feeling it. And I was just like, everything else in my life at that point was really not like good. So instead of being in my like sorrows, I'm like, how can I turn what I'm going through from a negative to a positive and try to help other people that are probably going through something? So that's why I did the talks with Locke, and you can get like little snippets of just me saying some stuff with some cute little music in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've seen a couple of them. They're mm-hmm. actually it's pretty sound advice too. Thank like you. You, you do have a a positive energy that you radiate in these videos. I appreciate it's, it. And yeah. honestly, like none of it's scripted. Like I'll just be thinking of something. And I'll be like, "Ooh, this is good. People will probably want to hear this." Mm-hmm. But, like they did good. So I'm just kind of like, "Yeah, I enjoyed it." So do you? Um, what pieces of those, like the ones that you you've hopped on, if you can think of any? Um, 
which one of those lock talks do you have um, appearing most in your life? Like like certain things that you do. I oh fuck, that's a good question. Hey, thanks, man. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> um. I don't know. Like, I think all of it has to do with me. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I can be very relatable with people about, like, life situations, relationships, friendships, work, that I feel like whatever I say in the video is something that I've personally gone through, so I feel like I want to share that with others. Yeah. Because I know it might not be exactly what they're going through, but at least something from there yeah. they can take a hold all of. All you got to do is zoom out, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, then all of a sudden the situation is this situation. 100%. Like, those experiences. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what? which one of those do you think is most, uh, most relatable? Or how about this? Which one of those lock talks has meant the most to you when you, when you made it? Oh. <sighs> I think, like, did I post this one? I don't know if I posted this one. But, like, don't chase, you oh, know? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Like, just don't chase. Like, whatever it is in life, it'll... Okay, so I have this inspirational quotes one. Okay. Where it's like, what is for you will not pass you because everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And that is just, like, a saying that I love. And it's just kind of like, it's so important because if it's for you, it'll be for you. If it's not meant for you, then it's not for you. And you can't be hung up on, oh, I should have done this or I should have had that or I wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. No, if you were supposed to do it, if it was meant for you, you would have done it or it would have come to you. And you just can't get yourself down about that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's pretty sound advice. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that, I feel like that is something that like human beings as a whole these days especially need to start uh, really getting a grasp of. Because like with this, like as good as social media can be for things like your lock talks and stuff, mm -hmm. it also causes a lot of people to look outside of their world and be like, I don't have this or yeah. I'll never be this or mm -hmm. I never did that, right? And yeah. like instead, if you just accept that you are in the now yeah, and you're existing here and all you can do is exist with the best attitude you can. 100%. And it's like every day we wake up, we have a choice. Mm -hmm. Are you going to allow what you've gone through in life to bring you down, hold you back and make you sad? Yeah. Or are you going to channel it into something that's going to be positive for you, bring you light, bring you energy, bring you joy to move you forward onto things that you want to achieve and do in life? Yeah. And I choose that option. I don't choose to dwell on what I've gone through and the sad times and the hard times. But shit, everybody goes through hard shit. Yeah. It's just all about how you pick yourself up and go forward. Yeah. It's always about the next day, right? 100%. My, my dad used to tell me this phrase. It was, um, uh, you when you get up in the morning, you can choose two things. He's like, you can roll over or you can get up, dress up, and kick ass. I love that. And it's like, that's... Yes. That, okay, that, dad, we yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Papa Tom, that's for you. Um, And he... uh. At the time, I was working at Moore's Clothing with him doing suits and stuff, right? Okay, yeah. So the dress-up part really hit me. I'd oh, like, I bet. I'd get yeah. up, put on my best tie, just mm -hmm. get out there and go, right? Um, and yeah, you know, people go through a lot of crazy shit in like their early 20s, late teens kind of thing. Ooh, let me tell yeah. you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So um, along with your lock talks, you obviously talk about your Lachlan Wells clothing brand, yes. right? And things like that. Um I want to know what got you interested in fashion in the first place. Because I know you do acting yeah. and things like that. But when I met you, it was on a show we were working on together. And mm -hmm. you were our costumes guy. Yes. And you always had just every single day. It was a different fit, different <laughs> vibe. <laughs> and I could not help but think, like, this guy's on fleek. Like, where do I where do I access this kind of fucking enthusiasm for dressing? <laughs> um, so, yeah, tell me about that. Do you have any inspirational figures that have come into mind? or Honestly... I, this sounds bad, but like, kind of like, no, like, I just, I will put something on yeah. and be like, can I rock this? And how can I rock it? Like, how can I make this look popping? What shoes to throw on? What jewelry? What accessories? Um, the pants, just everything. I don't know. And I just feel like when I put on a good outfit, you can see it. I can radiate from it. Like, yeah. I'm just confident as hell. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, I just love to feel good and to look good because then I'm just happy. Yeah. I'm just happy. Well, that's it. That, yeah, very much so. Like, I could not agree more. There's something to be said about just looking good and looking good the way you want to look. 100%. Right? Not like following a, like a list of ch check marks that you got to get in, right? But those outfits were crazy. Let me tell you, I like <laughs> I look back at some photos and I'll be like, damn, you wore that to set? Because now I feel like I've kind of toned down my style just a little bit on set. Not a lot. Yeah. Like, trust me, we always deliver fits, but like... Just enough. I was rocking up with furs, you know? Yeah, oh yeah. I remember that fur jacket you wore that one day. That was, that was a big one, too. Exactly. Was, yeah. Like, 
Oh, wait, no, scratch that. I'm still at extra. I rocked up with the fur on my last show that I just finished, so <laughs> never mind. It's it's necessary sometimes, right? I love it, Especially... and I love to walk in a space, and people be like, ooh, like, yeah. looking and ooing and eyeing and well, being like, what is he wearing? That's the thing, man. If you're in costumes, you better be the best dressed, you know? It just but you would sense. think, yeah. but other costume people look down. They're like, why are you dressed like that? We're here for, like, 15 hours. Yeah. You're going to work in that? I'm like, absolutely. You're going to work in that? Like... <laughs> you don't know what kind of company shit have gone on. 100%. Under my fist, you know? Like, so they'll be like, my pants will be so tight, it's like, I can barely bend down. They'll be like, well, how are we supposed to do your job if you're uncomfortable? I'm like, this is me at my comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm just used to the tight. You 100%. Know? That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. They, know, they obviously never got into the emo looks back in the day because the skinny jeans were something I was very much a fan I of. I loved skinny know? jeans. Yeah, I wore a size zero women's skinny when I was in high school. Those are small. Yes, they were. <laughs> yes, they were. Very small. It was just kind of, it was convenient oh. that like the baggy pants look was still kind of in because I couldn't fit them over my ass. So I just put the belt around halfway up the butt. Oh. And that's about where it okay. stayed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it, it was a really strange look. So you were was, low riding too. Yeah, it was confusing. Okay. It, yeah, yeah. It was, it was high school you know i love it yeah. <laughs> too bad i wasn't there damn yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know if i could find some pictures i'll be sure to show you sometime come on send yeah. them my way yeah i'll be i'll, I'll have to ask my mom for the books <laughs> well so if you don't have any um any inspirational figures at all like are there certain labels that you gravitate towards more or a certain like is there a genre of style that you appreciate even if you don't necessarily wear it I don't know, like a genre of style that I like. I just like to look good. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I can't put like a la like, like a a label or like a pinpoint of oh, this is where I like get inspiration from, or this is where I can like see where my style kind of like yep. fits. Because especially over the last few years, my style has changed so much. That's just the for... beautiful thing about fashion, right? One hundred percent. Yeah. And like growing up, I feel like. The things that I wore, like, when I was, like, a teenager, fuck, like, I wore all these cardigans, and I look back, and I'm, like, traumatized. I'm, like, oh, God. I, I wore a cardigan the other day to work, and I was, like, this is just You were wearing cardigans? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Cream ones, too. Holy crap. How cringe. And they were, like, flowy, and I was, like, oh. Like, I wore one, like, last week to work, because I was, like, running out of the house, getting dressed in the dark, and I get in my car, and I'm, like, oh, I grabbed the cardigan, not the button-up. And I was, like, well, the button-up, but, like, the cardigan version. I was, like, oh, mm. I don't like this. <laughs> I looked in the mirror, and I instantly was, like, 17 again. And I was, like, this is trash. Yeah, you think you looked super good back then, and then you get something that reminds you of You're, like, no. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I am a hoarder with clothes, so yep. I still have everything. Oh, really? They're in crates in the back of my closet. Well, if it, fashion is the way it is, then eventually those will be back in style. 100%. Sooner, I can right? just give them to my kids or something. Hey, there you go. I don't know. Like, kids, do you plan on having kids? I want five. You want five? Yes. Just like your parents. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, So if the fashion thing is that fluid for you. Yeah. Um. What advice would you give to someone who's looking to, like, up their game as far as, like, how they look on a day-to-day -day basis? I will say this. Get some fitted clothes. Mm -hmm. People be always rocking, like, okay, you know what? I'm a hypocrite. I'm over here with a baggy ass shirt. But you know what? The clothes are fitted. Pants yep. tight. Mm -hmm. Shirt tucked in. You know, like... Don't be afraid to show your form off. 100%. Like, yep. our bodies are beautiful. So if you're going to wear clothes that are going to accentuate that and really make you feel comfortable but also confident, I feel like that's going to really help you boost and want to, like, explore different options of clothing and styles. Mm -hmm. I, like, the biggest thing for me is, like, fitted clothes. I'd be wa walking around and seeing people with, like, the baggiest of clothes, and I'm just like, that's good, but just imagine if you had, like, a fitted shirt on and, like, a nice pair of jeans and like the belt was up nice and like yeah. you had it tucked in a little bit like you would look more put together like a whole package if you will yeah you know look like you took your time like actually yeah put it, yeah and just like i'm like always like a big experimenter with colors i feel like people really like to stay neutral mm -hmm. i like to go outside the box i like to go like do like a maroon red or like a hot pink one day or like yep. i don't know just something fun that wouldn't be your normal but Try it out and see how it goes because you'll yeah. probably like it. You know, you just got to step outside the box. Exactly. You know, and it, it's kind of a it to me. I think that it is one of the most accessible forms of like self expression. You 100%. Can get to, right. Like, yeah. Not everyone can own or go buy like an expensive instrument. Not everyone can get into like like purchase an easel and whatever you need to be able to paint. But if you're out shopping, at a, what's an easel. Oh, it's a thing. It's, <laughs> That's where you set the portrait. I know, up. You I got know. It now? You, got you, it? Okay. you said paint, and I was like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, like I, I, 
but everyone can go to a thrift store. One hundred percent. I was on my way here and I drove by a thrift store and I was like, "Damn, I want to pop in there on yeah. my way home." Yeah, because I can, love to thrift shop. Oh, you find all kinds of gems in those. One hundred percent. And you want to know what a hack is? So I, if you see on the ground, I have like my shorts and they're like short shorts and they're real tight. Yeah. I get all of my shorts at the thrift store, and you know where I go to get them? Huh. The kids section age eight to twelve. Nice, nice. <laughs> because their parents have always given out like their like soccer shorts or like their like athletic shorts. Mm -hmm. And those brands are made to stretch. Yeah. So it's like I put them on and just hugs me in all the right areas. It's giving, it's visually stimulating. I'm nice. like, well shit. Perfect. Shows off the thighs a little 100%. bit. One hundred percent. Booty's nice. giving, nice and ripe. I'm just like, okay, and it's four ninety nine. Nice, nice and ripe. Yeah. Eh? Like an Okanagan peach. Exactly. <laughs> it's just perfect. So wonderful. That's a little hack if you want some skinny yeah, there's, jeans. There's your first life hack from the deficit right so there. So skinny shorts, not jeans, skinny shorts. Skinny and shorts. Yeah, no, it's good. Cool. And it was four ninety nine. Like, come on. <laughs> Just was, wash them first, please. Was there, um, if you think back in your past, is there a moment that you're most proud of as far as an outfit goes? Like, was, was there one where you're like, okay, this looks awesome. I think I want to keep doing stuff like this. I would say yes, actually. I think... I wear this, like, racing outfit sometimes. I think I wore it on the, the show. senior NASCAR jacket. It's freaking sweet. Yeah. 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 I like, like, I don't know why, but I like to look, like, sporty, but, like, fashionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I have, like, my, like, NASCAR jacket, and then I have, like, these NASA pants and, like, oh. a striped red and white and, like, black shirt that kind of, like, match it. They're not even, like, matching sets, but, like, I piece them together, and I just feel like a badass in it. That's awesome. I loved it so much that I literally went back to the store. Well, there's two different stores, and I bought the same long sleeve shirt, and I bought the same pants, and I have multiples, if you will, in the costume world. What's the number on your jacket? Number on my jacket? Yeah, your your NASCAR jacket. Oh fuck! I should probably know this. But I, I feel don't. like it was twenty four. Was it? it? I feel like it was. I don't know. That I'll might look. just be my well, case okay, because if it is twenty four, I'm gonna be super jealous because that's uh, why Jeff Gordon, eight time NASCAR champion. My dad raised me watching NASCAR every Sunday. See, I'm the worst. I have pieces that I don't even really know the history behind, and then I'll wear them, and someone's like, "Oh, you have this. This yeah. was like from like yeah. the World Series of this and this and that." I was like. Okay. Like, yeah, that's fine. Though. I mean, you got <laughs> even nowadays you got kids walking around with Nirvana T-shirts and they think it's like a Post Malone album or something. Dead. Right? Like, that is hilarious. But if it looks cool and you like how it looks, that should be all that matters. One hundred percent. I put it on. It feels good. I look yeah. good. I'm buying it. Like it. Like it. Okay. So I'm gonna get one more thing out here with the the whole fashion topic that yes. we're on. I wrote down some quotes. Okay. Um, some famous quotes regarding fashion, and I want to give you me give me. I want you to give me a yes or a yuck. Oh, okay. I love it. Oh, I love quotes, this. Okay? A game. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's, I think it's, yeah, I've got six quotes here. Okay. A yes or a yuck. And we can do like a quick 30 seconds to talk about why it is either or. Okay. Right? Okay. So, the first one is trendy is the last stage before tacky. <laughs> yuck. Yuck. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think that trendy can go past tacky or never get tacky? I just think trendy things? is tacky. Trendy is tacky. Yeah. yeah. Why do you want to always be on trend? That yes, yeah, yeah, you know, point. It's, it's like an attitude, right? One hundred percent. Yeah. If you just want to be trendy all the time, that's that's tacky. You're gonna look like you itself. fell right out of the catalog or right off the Instagram page. Yeah. You don't want that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I see. Nobody wants to see a real life Gigi Hadid unless it is Gigi Hadid. One hundred percent. Okay. Like you're not gonna it. be a Kardashian. Like stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about uh, the second one? Um, he who goes against fashion is himself a slave to fashion. Oh. It was a yeah, right? Yeah or yuck? Yes or yuck, yeah. Yes. Yes? 100%. Okay. Let's elaborate on that a little bit. Well, because if you're going against fashion so much, then your own style is a, is a form of fashion. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, no, it's a yeah. It's a yeah, for sure. Cool. All right. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, this one's a bit longer. Uh, to achieve nonchalance, which is absolutely necessary for a man, one article of clothing at least must not match. Oh, I don't believe in that. So that's a yuck? Yeah, that's a yuck. That's a yuck? I want a full matching set, everything. I, I love color coordinating. Me too. Yeah, it's like, it's, I, I think it's like one of the lost arts. Honestly, I know? want even the underwear to match, like the shirt and yeah. the pants. I want the socks to match. I want the shoes to match. Yeah, and like what? which article are you, is not going to match and look good? Like, that's my question. It's like, like, are you going to have like, is your shirt not going to match your pants? Like, it, like I don't, I don't get it. Is your belt just going to stand out like a sore thumb? Right. Like, am I going to wear a full suit with like slippers? 
<laughs> I probably would. Oh, there you go. I mean, I guess the Gucci like, um, slides. Yeah, loafers are back in too. Yeah. So I guess I'm kind of behind <laughs> on that one. Uh, it is totally impossible to be well dressed in cheap shoes. Incorrect. What is it? What is that? Yuck I, I, or? Yes or yuck? Yeah. Say it, say it again. Say it again. It is totally impossible to be well dressed in cheap shoes. And I think, just yeah. for context, yuck. Yeah. You so can you totally think, be well dressed in cheap shoes. Yeah. Yes. So, like, I, like I'll wear like a $1,500 outfit, but have some chucks on, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, or some vans. Yeah. As long as it matches the trend, right? One hundred percent, and it yeah. still looks good. It still looks, still looks expensive, but like the shoes are twenty five ninety nine. So that's a yuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, awesome. Um, looking good is not self importance; it is self respect. Yeah. Yes. One hundred percent. Yeah. When you take time to care for your image, you're taking time to care for you, right? Exactly, because yeah. this is what people see. Yeah. And if you're not going to take the time to Put some effort into that. Gel your hair. Wash your face. I don't know. Like, brush your teeth. You'd be surprised at how many people don't do those small little things. Yeah. Like, you're not caring for yourself because if you don't care how other people perceive you, you don't care how you perceive yourself. So Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Next quote. A man should look as if he bought his clothes with intelligence, put them on with care, and then forgotten all about them. Yuck. Yuck? Yuck. You think someone should be fully aware of what they're wearing after they have it on? I'm aware of what I'm wearing. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That's fair. I'm wearing I, a light blue plaid. I kind of like the, the idea, though, because, like, if like if you were to be someone who, like, say I just went out and I got myself some fucking, I just bought an Yves Saint Laurent fucking $2,000 suit or something, mm-hmm. right? I put it on. I got the nice shoes, everything else. Mm-hmm. And then I go out and I act like the person who just bought these this suit and shoes instead of forgetting that I'm wearing the suit and just being me. I think oh, that's kind of what's getting question wrong. Do you want me to read it again? <laughs> <laughs> I but with what you just said, I agree with that. Yeah, I probably heard the question wrong. I think yeah, I think I I think the quote is more about having fashion as an excess, like something to emphasize who you are yes. rather than being the person in the clothes. If that makes so sense. so like. Wear the clothes, don't let the clothes wear you. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah, yeah, that's a much more streamlined version of exactly what this says, I think. Yeah. Okay, then I agree with that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yes. So that's a yes. All right. There's our, our rapid fire fashion questions. I loved it. That yeah, was did fun. You like that? Okay. Yeah, that was fun. Uh let's move you on. You had me thinking there. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I, I I do tend to uh my my mission is to stimulate. And Love if it. You're I'm thinking very stimulated. It you're stimulated. Great. Yeah. In all the right ways, hopefully. 100%. Right. Okay. okay good. And it's perfect. Friday. Yeah. Woo! Let me tell you. It phone is, Friday, is on. Isn't do not it? disturb. Oh my god! Halloween parties all night too. Oh fuck. Yeah, I know. I don't have a costume yet. Oh either. no, it's tomorrow. Okay, I is have it? a sick party tomorrow. Oh really? There's like 500 people going. Whoa. Yeah, it's a gay. It's a gay party. You want to come? I would probably. Yeah. I can get you in like a hot bunny outfit. I've actually got a Greek god outfit that my wife made. Ooh. Do you think she could come with me? We sure, have why not? We goddess outfit. Okay. Come. Cool. I'll send you guys the links. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll toss that out to her. I'll, Ta- yeah. Toss it out. Let me know. I'm going as a sexy ninja. It's oh, a full can... custom fit. Chaps, balaclava, bucket hat on top, like a nice, um, like vest situation with like straps hanging all off on it. Oh, it's a whole vibe. Whole vibe. Okay. Booty's out. It's just a vibe. Oh, yeah? Is it, it. Oh, is yeah. it assless? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wicked. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to check that out. I fucking, that sounds like a pretty good party, actually. Oh, it's going to be mental. It's going to be so fun. The last three years, I have, like, completely missed out on Halloween parties because of work. Okay. So, like, this year, I'm trying to, like, you know, get that back. Do you know? all the things that we can do now that we can't do when we go back to work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, I'll send you guys the links. Come through if you like. That'd be great. Okay, yeah. cool. Um. I want to move on to your acting. You were saying okay. that you've been doing some acting stuff. Yes. And, like, you know, you're quite the Swiss army knife as far as all that goes, right? Okay. So you said you've always wanted to act. I've always since wanted to, kid, ever right? since I was a little kid. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. What movie was it that turned you on to that? Is there one in, in particular that... That made me want to act? Yeah. You know what? Interesting, no. What it was was, so back in the day, we used to have DVDs and VH1s. <laughs> What is it? VC, VC, is that VH1? VHS. V- <laughs> but, but VH1 was also gone at the same time as the DVDs and VHS. Okay, so, so we used sense. to have VHSs and DVDs. And on those, there would be the section for bonus. So you could go to like behind the scenes mm-hmm. and you could go see extra clips. Yeah. And I remember whenever we would do like a family like movie night, I would always be the one to stay back and watch the behind the scenes. And I always would be like, I would watch it, I would be watching them. 
And then they would say, and cut. And then everyone would just start laughing. And I was like, why is everyone laughing? Like, this seems so fun. Yeah. And like, they, they get to be on camera. And like, I thought, like, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be like center of, a, like, center center of attention. attention. Always wanted to be seen. And I was like, wow, like, they're having so much fun doing this. Like, I want to do this. Yeah. So then when my parents separated, I remember my dad would always go to this coffee shop, being around the world. And he was talking to this guy that had just opened up an agency. And he's like, I have a kid for you. He's a character. Let me bring him in for, like, a meeting if you guys would like. Like, I don't know. He did You're going to love this boy. Yeah. He's a talented boy. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Very so then cool. after we went in for the interview, like, the little audition or whatever to be with the agency, they signed me on the spot. I was 11. And then for, like, two years, I was, like, a model for Nike for Michael Jordan's kids line. What? Yeah. Cool, man. Mm -hmm. That was been wicked. It was so cool. I wish I was a little bit older and I didn't smoke so much weed when I was younger because I would remember a lot more of it. Yeah. <laughs> but I got some sick-ass shoes. Cool. So, yeah. And then I did a lot of print work and some commercials. I remember my first movie that I ever auditioned for was The Tooth Fairy featuring The Rock. Mm -hmm. It was for Kid with Amnesia. I oh, wow. I didn't get it. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I hear you calling back way too many things to pass for an amnesia kid. Yo, 100%. <laughs> I was like, oh, so heartbroken. But yeah, I know it was cool. It was cool. And then I remember when I like became a teenager, that's when I kind of like, my parents always said, when you become a teenager, your head falls off a little bit. <laughs> my head fell off a little bit. So I didn't do, I like kind of like left the agency because like, I don't know, family stuff. And we had to move away for a little bit. But when we came back to Vancouver, I think... Two years later, I was, like, 15. And then I got into background work. Mm. And then I did background in, like, so many different products. We had, like, 400 different, like, productions. Yeah. You just do so many. You're called out to everything. In case anybody outside of the film world is watching this, background actors, the hardest working actors out there. They constantly jump from show to show to show. 100%. And, like, it's, and it's, it's, it's so life. awkward. Like, as a background actor, literally, you'll be, like, they'll pair you up to, like, walk with someone. And then you'll be walking and having to, like, mime, like, talk to them. Like, yeah. Yeah, You know, and it's just so awkward to me because then people try to have, like, real conversations with you. And I'm just like, sir, I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> like, let's just fake the shit, okay? But I will say I did have some of the best times of my life being a background actor. I met some people that are family to me to this day. Cool. And it was just such a ride. But yeah, I did that for, what, like, six or seven years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah? No. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, yeah? seven years. Nice. And then... I became a PA and I didn't really know how to like get an acting agent again at that time. Like I knew I wanted to be with an agency again for acting, but it's just kind of like I had gone like the background route, I guess you could say mm -hmm. just to like get back into the age, like get back into the industry. Okay. And I remember like I did sign with this one agent, but like she had her uh, agency out of the basement floor of her apartment it was really dingy it was really weird i was not getting any auditions so that kind of like discouraged me a little bit but i was like but i was getting booked for background so i was just kind of like and i saw them upgrading people a lot of the time so i was like well let me just do background then for the speaking roles or whatever yeah, yeah. like background get upgraded all the time yeah so i just like never got upgraded though <laughs> uh -oh. oh yeah never did <laughs> but yeah no i did background and i loved it but then yeah so i got into pa work yeah i did that for like four Oh. I did that for like three years but and during yeah. that time I signed with an acting agent cool. and he got me some pretty cool stuff yeah. out of it did you end up getting some more roles or anything yeah, yeah. I booked a few cool. and it was nice and then at that time I also did a reality show as well yeah, that's right. I was just gonna, uh, the, uh, so I was gonna try and keep that for its own standalone thing. Okay, but since okay, you then we'll come no, back to it. Okay, we'll come. We'll come back, back to that. Okay, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. Because that. that's the whole segment. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. So it just I signed with an acting agent and did some commercials, and then I remember when, like maybe about almost a year ago now, I booked a role with them. It was a movie for Paramount and VH1. That's where I was like tripping up. Cool. For VH1 called Binged to Death. I got cast as Hawkeye. Oh, nice. Hawk, I don't know what they were thinking. There is they a were, good self esteem boost. They there, were right? blind. I was like, wow. I know some people that auditioned for it too. And I was like, yeah, they're going to get it, not me. I'm like, oh, me? come on. <laughs> you just, you exude hot guy vibes. Oh, let's, stop. Let's be honest here. Thank you. Come you. in here with the chain and the low-key <laughs> outfit. Like, give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. But, yeah, so I booked the role, filmed the role. Yep. The movie's never coming out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is never coming out. It has been taken off of IMDb. You can't even find it on 
anything. And I guess they never told you why. No. Yeah. But then on my last show that I just finished doing costumes on, uh, the first AD was on the show for like a week. And he told me that, this is some hot goss. He told me that apparently the... I can't say who. So some of the higher ups, yep. it might have. Oh fuck! I don't know what I can say about this now because I gave the name of the show. There was just some tomfoolery happening with the money. Oh, I see. That's okay. what I can say. Yeah, yeah. there mm. is. There, yeah. That's a good way to stay safe. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, Keep yeah. Safe. That's all good. I'll tell you when we cut. But like, it yeah. was messed up. And really? Like, <laughs> oh man. And fuck. I was so excited. But like, you know what's interesting? Like when I went to go film that, it was like a few days, but. Day one, scene one, I'm in the, it's like a club scene, and my job is to make out with, like, the lead actor guy. So, literally, hi, nice to meet you. Oh, Lachlan, I forget his name. Okay, great. What are you comfortable with? I'm like, uh, I'm like, you can do whatever. He's like, great, I'm comfortable with anything. Literally, 10 minutes later, shoot the scene, we're making out in front of, like, there was also, like, 60 background there, too. I was had so much anxiety. But, like, after, like, the first few takes, then I was, like, fine, but. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. And then the other scenes were chiller, but, like. Yeah, it was interesting. Cool. Very mm-hmm. cool. So um, give me some names as to people that inspired you as an actor. Like, are there people that you looked up to when you were younger, when you saw them on the screen? Yes. I think, like, Steve Martin. Oh, damn. I love Steve nice. Martin. I did not see that coming. Yeah, That's, he's yeah. hilarious. He's great. He's, he's so funny. He's so, like, he's, like, great. And, like, I like, like a lot of old school, like, John Cleese. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that his name? Yeah, yeah, John Cleese. Yes, you yes, know? yes, yes. Monty yes. Python and all that. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, Faulty Towers. Faulty Towers. Yeah. Like, I grew up watching that when I was a kid. Oh, that's lovely. I yeah, loved it. And it's so just like, good. the comedy in it was just so good that it, I was like... It's just, it's so like, English comedy is great that way. It's just dry and like it's literal. It's so good. Yeah, like, it, I get such a buzz off of it. It's hilarious. And I think like Steve Martin. No, I yeah, said Steve Martin. Yeah. Martin, Martin Lawrence. Okay. I love Martin Lawrence. Yeah. He's really funny. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was good. I um, man, what was the last thing he was in? I think it was in like, what was it? There was a Bad Boys Three came ba- out. Yeah, I there. think it was. I was about to say like Bad Boys Three. I think that was. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and he did some family comedies and stuff like that. He was always a great, great guy to see on the screen though. He, yeah, like did comedy so well. Yeah. Are there any dramatic actors that you kind of hmm. see at all? Dramatic actors. Nothing that comes to my head right away, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I love, like, I have, like, favorite dramatic shows. Okay. Give me one. Okay, let, let me see. give you the list. Okay. Okay. So, okay, yes, I, I'm 27, so don't get mad at me, people, that it's not, like, from, like, the 80s. But <laughs> my shows when I was, like, a teenager was, like, Pretty Little Liar, Gossip Girls, One Tree Hill. Oh, I cry to Montreal that show. That was a good one. I like 90210, um, The OC. Oh, so you were all over the CW dramas, hey? Actually, now that I'm saying it, like, yeah, yeah. it's like all CW. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome, man. And I feel like I want to be, like, on the CW. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, The mm-hmm. OC. I remember, man, that their opening theme song was, like, so popular. What is it like? California. Oh my God. I still have that California. on repeat on my phone. Really? I listen to it all the time. Oh, it was awesome. playing on my way here. Who is it that does that song again? I can't remember who the band is. I forget the band, but oh. the song is so good. It's so, it's an iconic song now. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. The OC was huge. Huge. Like, holy shit. I remember, I'll never forget this. So when they killed off Marissa, um, I was watching it with my sister. Mm-hmm. And my sister was a really, really heavy fan of the show at the time. And I was like just kind of getting into it because I was still a little young for it. But when Marissa died, my sister had a full breakdown. Really? Literally broke the fridge because she was like bawling and frustrated, trying to find something to eat in the fridge. She's crying, rips the fridge off the wall or whatever, falls on the ground, smash. Wow. Yeah. Just she... goes to show you how much power that stuff really does have. 100%. And yeah. like one of the reasons why I want to be an actor and I love acting is because I want to be that person that you can go on an emotional roller coaster with. Like with these shows that I've watched, when the the character that I'm like invested in, when they cry, I cry. When they hurt, I hurt. When they love, I love for them. You know, it's yeah. kind of like it definitely changes your whole view of um, enjoying a show or a movie when you start. You have that first moment where you feel genuinely emotionally connected to a character. Exactly, and like you're invested in season after season. You see what they're going through, and you can mm-hmm. either relate or have empathy, and it just it's a ride. And that's what I want to be for somebody else. I want to be that emotional, mental, physical, like visual ride of a character for them where they can feel and see and cry and laugh and just 
cheer, you know? I think it's like it's really cool. So if somebody wanted to watch a movie and experience that, what would you recommend as far as a film? I like TV show or a movie? Let's go with a movie. Let's Oh. A movie. Uh movies are so short. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's, it's hard <laughs> to start feeling for people. <laughs> it's only an hour and a half long. Um I don't know. I, I'm like the worst. I was gonna be like, bring it on, but like, hey, <laughs> nice, classic <laughs> one, man. One hundred percent. But it has to be one number one. It can't be another one. My older sister would love the shit out of you for saying that. Oh, really? Oh, my God. It's iconic. Yeah, she was. Uh, yeah, she was about. She's like four years older than me. So when Bring It On was coming out and like Mean Girls and stuff like yes. that, she was like right at the it. high school age when all that was going okay. on. It was hilarious. But yeah, she used to. Do all all the fucking she used to redo the dance routines from Bring It On and like okay, all yes. that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also like this circles back to what I think would be an emotional like, yeah. like roller coaster. You know the movie Holes? Yes. I think that that's a really good choice. I did not even Yeah. That wasn't even in my head at all when I was I think that. Holes, because yeah. there's just so much that happens in that. And yes, I think it's like a Disney movie, but it's so real. Yeah. And it's so heavy. And I'm just kinda like what the characters go through within that journey of the movie. Yeah. Like, shit, I remember I was crying. Like, my dad was like 50 at the time. He was bawling. Little zero, yeah. man. That exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. So I feel like definitely, like, for an emotional ride, he, like, holes, for sure. That's a great one. Yeah. I think the first one I felt like a real connection, like, one that I was like, wow, this is a film that actually makes me feel was probably, um, did you ever see Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? That's a long ass title. I know. I have not. It's like an indie film with Jim Carrey in it. And oh, it's we love like some Jim Carrey. This like concept where they live in a time where you can now pay a place to make you forget about somebody. They will erase this person and all oh. memories of them from your mind. Oh snap! Okay. And like the the movie takes place on his journey through his memories with this woman who broke his heart, oh. and he starts realizing like through it. That, like, he doesn't want to forget her because even though she broke his heart, it helped with, like, lessons and mm -hmm. life and value, right? Aww. And, the, yeah, it's... It What's was this movie called again? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I'm going to have to watch recommend. that. Yeah, Am it, I going to cry? Probably. I'm a big crier. Oh, I yeah. cry all the time. I no, cry today already. Like, I cry all the time. Really? There's, oh, yeah, this, yeah. there's this one scene they do where they, like, I guess the, the people operating the machine directed him to the wrong memory. And he's, like, a toddler. But it's, like, Jim Carrey... With a superhero cape on, and all the stuff around him, like the, it's in a kitchen, right? Okay. But the kitchen table is like built in a way that it's like two feet over Jim Carrey's head, so he looks like the same size as like a three year old okay. in comparison to everything in the kitchen. Oh wow! And it's it's really neat. Like you know, he's already a pretty uh, like ecstatic or enthusiastic actor as it is, right? Of course. So to see him going full three year old toddler having tantrums under a kitchen table is really something different. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I mean, what else do you act for, right? You don't want to just be the same person every time. No, act, right? it's all about like, embodying a character and yeah. seeing what you can do with the pa with the words on the page mm. to perform it in, like as a character. and bring so, it, Yeah. What's your take on method acting? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I, I hear that from a lot of other actors. They, they say, give me the same reaction. Mm, I don't do it. Necessary or unnecessary? Unnecessary. Unnecessary. 100% unnecessary. A yuck, if we will. 100% a yuck. Yeah, like, okay. you don't need, like, when they say cut, you can snap out of it. Like, yeah. I don't know. I've worked on some shows where, like, the actors are method because they're playing, like, a really, like, messed up character and they're, like, I don't know, like, demented or whatever. But yeah. it's like, sir, you're now just an unpleasant person. <laughs> and it's like, we're here for 15 hours out of the day. Snap out of that character. Yeah. Like, it's not necessary. You're going to get the takes. Yeah. Now you're just a dick. 100%. Until they say rolling. 100%. And yeah. then, like, they'll make a disclaimer. Oh, he's a method actor. So, like, when you're on set with him, just know, like, if he doesn't snap out of his character, it's not you. It's just, he's method. I'm like, yeah. no. You're just using that to be an asshole. Now, do you think there's something to be said with holding a certain... Um, emotion that you've managed to lock into through the different shots 100 well, yeah. i feel like if you're doing like an intense emotional scene even when they cut stay in that mm -hmm. stay in where you've gotten yourself to be able to perform in that like emotional space or like anger or like whatever whatever realm of emotion that you're portraying in the scene if it's really heavy and it's not like a everyday like casual person type yeah. of convo yeah then yeah i feel like it's really necessary that when you're filming that scene to stay in it. So when they say cut, 
put some headphones in, stay locked into your zone. But then once that scene is done, you go back to your trailer, mm. chill out, get yourself back to 100. Yeah. 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 As a being an AD, I've been on set for a few different um, ultra dramatic kind of scenes. <laughs> Me too. And like when you, when the actors come off and you can tell that they're just trying to stay in it, it seems physically exhausting for them yeah like I, i've always noticed that like after we do a day where we've been filming a lot of heavy scenes mm -hmm. the actor who was doing that she'll come to me and immediately at the end of day or like before the day's even over she'll say i just need you to make sure that i have a couple sandwiches and a coffee in my trailer for absolutely because then they get back and they're because a lot of the times you won't eat to stay in that state right 100%. you'll you'll starve yourself because of the fact that it creates that stress i actually don't eat before i film at all no i mean like i'll maybe have like a smoothie but like anything solid mm -hmm. like because when you're acting you have so much you have to deliver like people are there you're the talent i guess you could say so you need to be able to perform and i feel like i don't know my stomach's weird so if i eat too much or something or something doesn't agree with me then yeah. it's gonna like if i'm thinking about my stomach and i'm not thinking up here and about my lines, I'm not going to give my performance. So I well, just try to eat after. Yeah. Well, and, you know, like, as our discussion before we started rolling the cameras, we were talking about our ADHD commonality, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I found interesting that they seem to say about people with ADHD is that we experience bodily function at a higher level. Like, our senses are much more aware of, like, our digestion. Yes. And that's why there's, like, a higher rate of IBS in ADHD. Oh, my God. I have IBS. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's Fuck. like It just correlates like that. It's mm -hmm. it's strange. And I think it's um, apparently one of the theories is that we're just so aware of how our body is feeling at all times. Yeah. That it kind of exaggerates that in our head. Interesting. Yeah. Weird, right? Wow. Yeah. So that might be why, like... Knowledge. Right? It, I love it. Knowledge is power. 100%. Man, you know? At least most of the time. Most of the time, <laughs> not all the time. Uh, so, when you're, when you do your your acting, like when you get on, whether it be background or if you actually land, a, like you landed a role or like something. Is there? A, you said you don't eat before you get on. Is, no, is, okay. Let me like. I don't want people to think I'm like starving myself. Like no, no. But it's, I will eat after I feel comfortable. Yeah. Like once I get on set, I've done a few takes, a f couple scenes or whatever. And, like, I get broken back to my trailer. Yeah. I'll, like, have a snack, you know? Yeah, you want to be... And something that's, like, clean, like some apple slices with peanut butter or, like... Nice. Dude, a granola something. Number one favorite childhood snack. Apples, apples and peanut, peanut butter. butter. Oh, it's time. iconic. I love oh, it. Dude, so I have it to this day. Uh, it's Me too, yeah. Yeah. You just you can't stop. It, it's, no. it's delicious. I'm so glad I'm not allergic to peanuts, man. Oh, my God. I know. That'd be awful. Jesus, can you imagine? Mm. Holy crap. That sucks for those people. So is there anything else you do prior to, though? Like, um, I can understand the whole not eating part first, though, because, like, it, it does kind of help you to, like, just focus more on just getting there and getting into it, and then you can... And I think it also has to do right? with, like, my anxiety, too. Like, whenever yeah. I walk into, like, a new space, I have anxiety at the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, like, until I can get comfortable, yeah. then I'm, like... If I have anxiety and I eat, I'm like all fucked up. So I'm you strike like, me as a highly empathic person too. So I'd assume yeah. you walk into a room and you kind of pick up on the vibes pretty quickly. One hundred percent. Yeah. If it's tense, if it's good energy, if it's like mm -hmm. rushing, if it's calm, if it's a good environment, like I I can tell and I absorb it. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So I'm just trying to think of what else we should talk about with your acting, Lachlan. Like you, you've you've got so many. Well, you know what? Let's move on. What made you want to start this, uh, Lachlan James? Apparel. What's what's this? Oh, like? Lachlan Wells brand. Lachlan Wells. Yeah, that's okay. It. I always just wanted to have my own merch mm -hmm. and to just have something that somebody can wear and be like, "Oh, that's Lachlan Wells." Like, mm. I don't know. It, it sounds so stupid, but I just I loved it, and I always wanted it. Ever since I was a kid, I've wanted my own brand. I've always wanted to have my own something, mm -hmm. and it's such a good feeling to walk down the street and to look at someone's shirt and be like, "Oh, you're wearing Lachlan Wells." Well, guess who made that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, very cool. 100%. Very cool. I'll be like, oh, where did you find this shirt? Like, if they don't know who I am, I'll yeah. be like, oh, where did you find this? Oh, I just saw it, like, on Instagram or something like that. I was like, oh, who's a buyer? I'm like, Lachlan Wells. I'm like, oh, okay. He's I like his stuff. So I, I only managed to look on your Instagram page for some of the samples. I didn't mm -hmm. manage to get to the website. but That's okay, because uh, the website is currently under construction, because I have new stuff coming, and I have a new graphic design going on the page. Cool. So yeah. are you, I notice it's hoodies, t-shirts, are you going to be, do like, there's pants and stuff too, though, right? We have pants coming, not like jeans or anything, but mm -hmm. like sweats. I want to do like a 
jogger line. Yeah, nice. So, I'll be and like a tie dye line as well. So cool. Matching nice. sets. Of course. Are Are you planning on branching out into anything like uh like a more in the line of like athletic fashion or say yes. maybe into like business casual or suits or something athletic like that. Athletic all the way. Yeah. I'm a workout guy, so athletic for sure. I mean I do have a muscle tank, like in one in black, one in white. What do you think would look on me? Which one do you think I should have? The muscle tank. The muscle tank? I think so. Okay. And my green shorts. And the green I do look good in green. I, I don't wear do. it very often, but it is one of my favorite colors mm, to wear. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, like, um, how long ago did you start this? You said, you said March of 2021. March of 2021. Okay. Yeah. And when did you, like, had you been planning it for a while or was it, like, just one week you're like, you know what? Let's just do it. I'm just going to. I always wanted to do the brand. And then I remember in 20, the beginning of 2020, I got into a relationship. And me and this person were going to do the brand together. Mm-hmm. So we were already kind of, like, working on stuff and. Like, just ideas. We hadn't really put anything on, like, paper or concrete. But then we broke up. And I was like, well, I still want to go, f- like, forward with this brand. Like, yeah, it was, I've always wanted to do it. He was just helping me do it. Yeah. So I was like, well, fuck it. If he's not going to be here for the ride, then I'm going to just ride by myself and do it. And quote Thanos, the whole, like, fine, mm-hmm. I'll do it myself. Exactly. Yeah, cool. 100%. So, Very cool. Yeah. So, like, where do you where do you see it in five years, five, ten years? Like, what in your <sighs> ideal world, progress picks up, right? That's what are question. people wearing Lachlan Wells clothing for and what's it going to look like? I feel like people are wearing Lachlan Wells clothing because it makes them feel good. They feel confident. Um, it's just, you feel a vibe when you wear the clothes. You mm-hmm. feel comfortable. You can, they're like everyday wear. So cool. you can always find a reason to put something from Lachlan Wells on. Okay. Yeah. So I, I want you to give me a, a like a paint a picture for me. Somebody wearing Lock and Wells brand, what do you, what do you see them doing? First three things that come to mind. I know you can say anything. Dinner. Dinner. Okay. Working out. Working out. All right. Social events. Social events. Yeah. Cool. All right. Nothing too fancy though. We're still like, you know, like streetwear. But yeah. you know Are you gonna bring any collars into the line? You know, I have thought about it, but yeah. it's really hard running a business by yourself. Mm-hmm. It's very expensive. Yeah. And they always say, just be consistent. It'll pick up. And I do know that. And it's yeah. like, I have seen it growing, but it's just kind of like, I want to get what I have right now popping before I try to bring too much in because I don't want to overload myself. Mm-hmm, that's fair. But I still know that you have to bring in some new things to kind of bring in a new audience. Mm-hmm. So it's a work in progress. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, do you have anybody to like mentor you at first when you first got it going? <laughs> that sounds stupid, but YouTube. Nice. <laughs> Not stupid. That's where everyone learns nowadays. Literally, you can find anything on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I rebuilt the whole front end of a Honda just with YouTube. Honestly, I do all my, like, tutorials are the best thing that ever came out of YouTube. It it really is the best thing. 100%. Totally right. I learned how to tie a tie off YouTube, and I literally work in costumes. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) That's, yeah, yeah. I still remember the first time I learned to tie a tie. It was, it felt so accomplished. And now it's funny, because, like, when I'm ADing out at the circuses there, Mm -hmm. right, the amount of costumers that I've worked with that don't know how to tie ties mm-hmm. blows my mind. Yeah. And then I'll end up tying ties for like 18 background. Oh, I love it. It's just crazy. Well, if I'm on set with you, I might ask you because I think I might be a little rusty. That'd be great. I'd, <laughs> I'd be more than happy. At least it gets me involved in that department in some way. I've always been fascinated by that. That'd be really cool. Yeah. That'd so perfect. Um, by the way, like, I know this feels like an interview and stuff, but it is supposed to be kind of a conversation. So if you're, like, wanting to ask anything, like, Um, go ahead. Like, you can dig. Don't put me on the spot. I'm not ready. I'm not putting you on the spot (laughs) at all. I'm just letting you know that, like, if if it feels like I'm, like, jumping at you with all these questions. No, I love it. Okay, good. Okay, as long as as you like it. Okay, wicked. Perfect. (laughs) Uh, I used to be much worse at taking charge. Really? You know, my wife whipped me into shape. Did she? Oh, yes. Did she? Was she like, I want a man that's going to take charge? Um make the reservations it was more like i knew i would not be able to keep her unless i started displaying some authority over my own life wow yeah that's yeah. big well it's you know she's a really 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 great compassionate woman mm-hmm. but she was always the one to be the first to say something if anything was wrong i was always deathly afraid of you know offending people or like okay. sounding like the bitch you want at the table you can't be afraid to offend people just oh it's easy people enough. are sensitive you I'm just a, have to just <laughs> go for it i'm a straight white man everything i say is offensive at some point actually you know? yeah it is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. I guess you I put should, it that way. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't say straight. I'm not, you know, but like, you know, I look, I come oh, off as... There's hope. There's always hope. There's <laughs> always hope. It just depends on what the compromise is to get to the hope. But it's, okay. Yeah, that's, all, that's the whole plan. Luckily, I got time. No, there I go. <laughs> We're just going to keep the studio door locked for the next few hours here, yeah. guys. Yeah. You can leave the cameras on, just dim the lights. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, so... How about this, Lachlan? Why don't you tell me? Um, let's let's get like meta for a moment here. Let, let's really get into like, like Instagram. No, meta? no, no, no. We don't need. Well, sure. Well, well, what's meta? What do you mean by meta? Meta, as in like I'm so dumb. The big, big, big <laughs> picture, like the oh, okay, the, the you know the life meaning kind of stuff or whatever. Okay. Right? So when you let's say. 40 years down the road, something's tragically happened. You've died young or whatever. What are some things? Seven years old. Yeah, that's still pretty young. Is it? I mean, I, I would hope so. Okay, yeah, that's pretty right? that's, that's young. That's I'd like to see you live in past 80. That would be nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, right? Okay, like, yeah. Jesus. Okay. There's, there's <laughs> too much of this world that needs more Lachlan in it. Still. You know, that's right. So what, what kind of mark do you want to leave? Like, what do you hope... You can do with your life while you're here. I want to change the world. And that sounds so stupid to say, but I want my art to bring joy to people. I want to have like a show that people will be watching for like years and years to come after I pass. That they'll be like, they'll watch it like like the Bernie Mac show. Nice. It's an iconic show. Yeah. Even though he's passed, they still play it. People still love it. Yeah, like it's made a mark, and I want to make a mark on this world. Bernie Mac, what a fucking champion! That guy, one hundred percent, awesome. I every mm-hmm. time I saw him in a movie, he just killed it, killed every it, time. Yeah. delivered everything. Yeah. And a great, com- and a great comedian too. Like he yeah. was one of those triple threats. He, he really could do could. it all. Yeah, he was amazing. Do it all. I never saw him actually dance, but I'm sure he could bust it. Like oh, I'm pretty sure he could. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if he could. So you want to? You said you want to have a show and stuff. Do you have any yeah. idea what the show is going to be like? So. I want to be, I don't really know what the show's going to be like, but I just know what I want it to, to be. I want to be on a show that does like, you know, like Law & Order. It's been on for like 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to yeah. do like a Law & Order. Like like a variety um, show. Yeah. Like something that, I want a longevity. Other. I want yeah. something that's going to go on for multiple seasons. Mm. And then I want to have my businesses. I want to have my own reality show circled around me and my family. Nice. That I can do outside. Like on Law & Order, Ice, what is it? Like... Ice T, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice T. Ice T. Yeah. He has his reality show. Ice loves Coco. So he's filming the reality show. He's filming his TV show. Like I love that. I want to. I want to have both my hands in those because I love reality. I've done yeah. that and I've done acting. I love that. So I would love to have my hands in both of those and just kind of have longevity and make an impact to where people will be talking about it for years to come. There seems to be like a bit of an absence as far as shows with that sort of potential in it now like have you noticed that 100 like, what do you think it was about like series like law and order or er or like you know ones that went on for 20 24 seasons i think because they they aired at a time when a lot of people would have a nine to five yeah they'd go to work they'd come home they'd sit down they would have their dinner they would watch the show and that was their weekly monthly yearly routine yeah but now everything is so accessible. You could be watching on your phone. You could be watching here and there. Like that routine that brings you joy is not really there because you can just watch anywhere. Like I remember like back in the day, like I would love to cuddle up on the couch, have my popcorn and watch the new episode of something. Yeah. But now it was just so accessible that like with that routine not being there, people lose interest really quickly now because they're like occupied by so many different things. And now all these different streaming platforms mm-hmm. You can watch 10 million things in an hour, you know? You can just always find something else to watch. Yeah. It's... Where it's like, at that time, it was like, you have this show, you like this show, you're going to watch this show. So I just feel like there's too many options for things to succeed now, but if it does succeed, then you are hit the mark. Yeah, it almost seems like at, at some point, um, people wanted to make all the shows their own mini-series with, like, an ongoing plot line, mm-hmm. like, I noticed with like shows like Law and Order or ER, like, yeah, there were some basic things that would like change yeah. throughout the show, but it was always like a different topic each episode. There yeah. wasn't really anything too deep. Like if you missed the episode last week, you're not gonna be completely lost. One hundred percent. You're not missing much. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, and I think that's I think that's honestly success for like a good show is that no matter where you've left off, where you pick up, mm-hmm. it's going to be a new story, so you can follow that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Characters will be the same, but yeah. the storyline will be different. That's a pretty good ambition, though, to, to bring that back to have that kind of a format out. A hundred percent, and it's going to happen. Yeah. I just book me someone, please. Yeah, hey. Maybe and we I can would help love you a show with like my name in the title. Mm. You know, the Lachlan Wells. Where is Lachlan Wells? Not where's Lachlan Wells? That means I've disappeared. No, no, because it could be like, you know, <laughs> you've ended up at like this place and like people are just following you to do these things and stuff. True. Like, it's true. wherever, wherever the journey of life takes Lachlan Wells, you know? True, 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 true. Something wild like that. I, I love know. it. I'm a, I'm a pitch guy. I'm not much of a writer. <laughs> oh. oh, that kind of pitch. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pitcher, catcher, not the same thing. <laughs> so when. So you want to have your own series going and stuff? Yeah. When you pass away, like, you hope that you're remembered with, like, those sorts of things. What what sort of, like, um, feelings are you hoping to draw out in people with these shows and stuff? Is it just strictly entertainment, or are there, like, certain, like, lessons that you want to pass on? I want to touch on life, you know? Like, mm-hmm. what people go through on everyday life. Yes, you can have something that's funny and that's comedic, but to see, like, the real struggles of everyday life that are relatable, not just funny... I think will be really important to show. It's like that uh, show, um, Shameless. Did you ever watch Shameless? No. It's a very, very much like that. It's like a comedic okay. feel, but it's all based around like this, like uh, a neighborhood in South Chicago. Okay. It's like the most dangerous area of Chicago. Yeah, I was about to say, isn't, yeah, yeah. isn't that the most dangerous place in the world? Yeah. Uh, in at least North at America? Times, I think so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but they're like, it is more of a dark comedy, but it's it's very real. Like the family is... In a struggle, the father is like a a not recovering, but constantly changing drug addict, alcoholic type figure. Mm. They're a bunch of siblings. They live in like what is practically poverty, right? And like hey. that kind of stuff. It's still funny, but they definitely also highlight a lot of like the real struggles of growing up in that sort of life. And wow, okay. Yeah. Definitely worth watching, honestly. Shameless. I, yeah, yeah. I see it on streaming somewhere, so I'll give it It'll a It'll have you laughing and crying. It's an HBO series. So I cry yeah. all the time. Yeah. Really? So yeah, I'll, yeah? Okay. I'll watch it. I, yeah, I love a good cry. Good to cry. You, know, you ever notice like those people who never cry, when they do finally cry, they think something's wrong with them. Hundred percent. It's like you don't need to feel bad for processing emotions. Man. I've cried five times this week. That's great. I cry all the time. I cried today. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. was literally driving to my car, and what was it? Well, I was listening to some song on the uh, on like my Spotify, and I was just like, I remember, oh, it was Ed Sheeran, like, Give Me Love. And uh, I was just like, it came on, and I was like, are we going to do this right now? And I was like, okay, let it play. And I remember I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Music is wonderful that way, though. Right? 100%. Like, it's cleansing. Yeah, so let's, let's touch on that, actually. Tell yes. me, what kind of, like... Who do you dive into when you're in times of hardship? What kind of music do you choose to go to? I'm the worst. When I'm sad, I'll make music that's I'll I'll listen to music that makes me sadder. Yeah, but just so I can cry it out, you know. Helps you feel it more, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some John Mayer or some shit, you know, like. Oh, like, I'm like I go to Ed Sheeran. Like his music was and old Sam Smith. Oh, nice. Ed Sheeran nice. and some old Sam Smith. Oh my God, get the tissues. I used to listen to, uh, like obviously John Mayer was like my breakup guy. Okay. I remember I broke up with my first girlfriend in high school, and I went to my pool house. Like, my parents had this little pool in our backyard, and my dad built this shanty little wooden okay. cabin next to it kind of thing. Um, but I went out there, and I put on Gravity by John Mayer. Oh, oh man. What a good one. Just on what repeat. What a good one. And there's a little teenage Adam sobbing. <laughs> He's, like, laying in there. And uh, Jack Johnson was always good. He helped me get through oh, a lot yes. of times. Yeah, yeah. He's got this one song called um, uh, Even If You Don't Understand. I think it's called or, uh, It's Understood. Okay. And it's like this really deep, heavy drum hit that starts going. And it's not one of his most popular songs, but if you have a pair of headphones on and you listen to this, it starts off with this first kick of the drum and it just hits you in the chest Ooh. in like a really deep kind of way. And then okay. like, it's like he's got that melancholy vibe going on yeah. and there's this part in it, these lyrics where he, he says it over and over again. It's like, um, uh, it's all understood even if you don't understand and it's oh, all wow. relative even okay. if you don't understand. And, yeah. And it's all just because. Oh, I have and, to listen to this. Yeah, yeah. And it gets like... Whenever I was like super sad, 
And I needed to still feel that, but I needed some, like, optimism as well. Mm-hmm. Or, like, some perspective changing, I guess. Yeah. That song, I would always go to that. Because it would remind me that if you feel like no one's understanding you, yeah, just realize that it's all understood even if they don't understand. Because it's all relative. Wow. Right? Like, That's deep. Struggle is struggle. Right? That's deep. It, yeah, yeah. It's kind of yeah. like what we were saying earlier, the zoom out. Yeah. Right? Eventually, it all kind of it all ends up being part of the same thing. Kind of wild. Oh, also one more song that I just love to cry to. Okay, um, it's country, so don't right. get at me. Hey, I but like it. It's Rascal Flatts. What hurts the most? Oh god! Oh yeah, okay. my gosh! Don't. It doesn't matter if I'm having the best day ever. If I put this song on, I'm sobbing. I'm just <laughs> sobbing. Ugh. So do you listen to other country music too? Then yeah, yeah. I like some Sam Hunt. Nice. Yeah. Nice. What about it like anything like um. Eric Church or anything like that, like or what was the other guy? He used to do like um, mm, I can't think of the name now. He was a country artist. Who, it's going to sound really hard to define because everybody sings about trucks and beers. You know what I love about country music is that when they're in love, the way they sing about the people they're in love That's with, amazing. like oh, like how she opened the beer with her like one small like f- like f- like small nail. I don't know, like yeah, like they'll just think about like oh, like I saw her wearing like some dirty chucks with a cute mini dress, and yeah. I'm just like. The, like it's the details yeah. for me, which just like kills me inside. I love it. Fishing in the dark, man. Yeah, me go fishing in the dark. Like and they just it. It's all about being barefoot in the backwoods with it's the woman so you love. Cute. Like, yeah, yeah. I love it. They really do. Really like they do hit it on the head when it comes to singing about things like that. too. One hundred percent. I yeah. find like. I tried to hate country for so long. Oh, me too. I jumped on the bandwagon and I was like, country. Oh, God, I hate country. Yeah. But I tried to listen to it and I was like, <gasps> Yeah. You got me hooked. All you got to do is get around a lake with a beer in your hand and you're like, No, okay. Oh. Now I just want to listen to Kenny Chesney. Like, you know. Kenny Chesney? Yeah. What a name. I love it. Yeah, he's another really big country artist or whatever. You know, in Kamloops, people fucking mm, love country music. So I bet. It was, a, it was a hard life, man. All I wanted to do was listen to my death metal and be left alone. Oh, <laughs> bless. <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole thing, man. I love that. Just wild, yeah. So are you, uh, do you do any musical stuff? <sighs> no. No? I wish. I could always, I always say this. If I had a good, like, producer, sound mixer, a microphone, a little audio tune, mm-hmm. a little auto tune, I could create a bop. Yeah. But, like, can I naturally sing? Well, absolutely not. Like, know the things you're not good at. Singing is not one that I'm good at. I really wish I was because I love to perform and I love to sing, but it just, what's in my head is not coming out of here. So I just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it is its own kind of strength to recognize your own weakness. 100%. Yes. I remember from a young age, a teacher taught me, well, not taught me, but told me, know the things you're not good at so you don't continue to do them. <laughs> <laughs> And that stuck that's, with me. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. That's for sure. Um, what are you um, what do you do in your life when when things you've been trying things out, something you really care about or whatever, and it doesn't work out for you? Like, I guess what I'm trying to ask is like, what's your attitude towards failure? I feel like if you, I feel like if you're doing something and it's not working and you give up, uh-huh. then you're failing yourself. Every you can get anything in this world that you want mm-hmm. if you keep at it. Yeah, you just have to keep going. Okay, and I. We'll say, like, there's been things in my life that I was like, oh, I really want to do this, but, like, I'm just not getting there. I don't know why. I see other people around me, like, that maybe just started doing it, and they're already having success with it. And I'm just like, well, what's wrong with me? But you can't always be like, well, what's wrong with me? You kind of have to be like, do you want to do this? Yes or no? Yes? Then keep going. Yeah. So. Cool. Okay. Mm. So is there any any kind of um, advice beyond that that you would tell to someone who's trying to break into something like what you're doing? I would just say... If you have a goal and a dream, yeah. just keep going at it. If you give up on yourself, then you're giving up on the dream. If your dream is still alive, believe in yourself because you'll get there. What's the closest you've come to giving up? Oh, fuck. Like, I remember, like, I was, like, before I booked my last role, which was, like, a year ago now, and I'm still pissed about it because I'm like, well, where's the next one? Yeah. But, like, with acting, like, I want to give up all the time because I'm not getting what I think I deserve, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And then there'll be people around me where I was like, especially like the thing about working in costumes that like, I'll see people that I've like, that I, I'll see people doing the roles that I've auditioned for and I'm like, really? <laughs> like, I gave you gold they and you, you wanted silver? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? I guess that's a healthy attitude to keep though. I yeah. Mean, do you think that attitude ever gets in your way at times? Like, do you ever Probably. Think, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> probably does. Probably, yeah. But I have to think of myself that way because if I don't and I allow myself to be like, oh, maybe you're not that good or maybe this and that, then you're going to doubt yourself. And once you start mm-hmm. doubting yourself, that's when everything's going to crumble. Now, when do you think somebody has gone too far with that to the point where they're like, they're like blind to their own uh, areas of weakness, like where they could improve and stuff like that. Like, are you, are you still, do you still keep yourself open to being able to improve in certain oh, 100%, areas? Oh, 100%. Yeah? 100%. I remember I did this audition maybe like beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. I thought I nailed it. I sent this in. I was like, oh, this is my role. My agent messaged me back. He's like, and it was like maybe like two hours before the deadline for yep. when you can submit it. He was like, Lachlan, like, this just isn't good. Like, can you, <laughs> can you uh, like, retape this and send it in? And I was like, uh, like I had to be on set the next morning for costumes. So I was like, literally, it took my sleeping pill. I'm about to go to bed. I sent it in. Um, I was like, I think this is amazing. Like, what are you talking about? Like, this is so good. Like, I delivered <laughs> yeah. the character. Like, I really studied and like embodied the character. He's like, no, like, like you missed the mark on this. I was like, Ooh. I was so mad. I was fuming. And I asked my dad. I was like, Dad, can you watch this? He was like, he. Saw how I did it, thought it was good, but then heard the notes from my like, from my agent being like, "This is kind of how the character is supposed to be, mm-hmm. like, portrayed." And that he was like, "Okay, well then I can kind of see that." But I just in my head he was wrong. He was just yeah. wrong. So I remember I woke up at like I had to be on set at six. I woke up at three to refilm the audition because he got me an extension. And even then I was like, I didn't want to do it because I knew he was wrong. But he was right. Like, I watched another person's audition for the same role. And I when, once I watched that, I realized, so this is what he meant. Like, he, he like how to do it differently but still being true to the character. And just because I might think it's good doesn't mean it's good. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, like, that's the good thing about an agent. They're going to tell you when it's not given. Yeah, true. He let me know it wasn't given. What do you say to people who have trouble taking that kind of advice? Like, how, how do you... Get better at taking it, because yeah. you're going to get it. Yeah. You're going to get it, and there's no way around it. Like, not you're not perfect at everything you do, career-wise, yeah. anything. You're going to have some not-so-good days, and not-so-good takes, and not-so-good, like, whatever. Yeah. Just take the information, absorb it, either take it and, like, absorb it, or just leave it. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you're going to get it. Created, like, a learning opportunity. Yeah, and that. then after when he gave me that information, I was like, okay. I got into some acting classes again, and I was like, oh, I don't even want to be here. I know I'm the best. But then after, I was like, whoa, like, it really opened up my mind. Yeah. And I was like, it really helped me kind of dive into, like, another part of myself as an actor, which I loved. Cool. So take the feedback. Take the yeah. criticism. You know what? It's only helping you better. It's only helping benefit you. Especially if it's coming from your agent. If he's if you're not making no money, he's not making no money off you. Yeah. So he's not going to tell you nothing that's going to hinder you. Yeah. You know? He's not saying it just to be a dick. He's Mm-mm. saying it to, like, actually help you out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Can you think of a time in your life where you uh, let that get the best of you? Where, like, you thought that someone was absolutely wrong and you were absolutely right and then it all just blew up in your face? Oh. Come on, give me some juicy stuff here. Oh. Like career wise or yeah, anything, yeah. And just give me a, an example from your life where like you were like so certain about something and everyone else was wrong. And then you found out that like maybe you should have figured it I out. I don't know actually. if I've had that. No? I don't think so. I can't think of anything. Like I don't know. No? I don't know. Like when I was when I thought I was right, but then everyone I thought everyone else was wrong. But then it turned out I was wrong. Like, well, just like not necessarily that you were wrong, but just that you were so set on a particular vision or or motivation, then you thought you had it completely down pat, and you had people telling you that like it could have been changed in a certain way, but because you were so confident in the way you were doing it, you didn't listen, and then it popped. I don't off think I've it. ever had that. Really? Is that a bad thing? I don't know if it's a bad thing. I just. I feel like it's an experience that humans have gone through once or twice in their life. No. Maybe you've just been really good at living. You know? oh, fuck, that's not the case. <laughs> that's not the case at no. all. But no, I can't pinpoint something where it's like I was so like set on something and they're like, no, we're going to do it this way. I refuse. And then maybe it... you've just been lucky enough to actually have the attitude to take advice. Yeah, I will take advice. Yeah. If someone's telling me this is going to make it better. Mm-hmm. Well, fuck it. Like, I want it to be the best. So. Yeah, I see. I'm kind of on the opposite side of that. Like, for at least not now, mm-hmm. but there is, I was definitely the kind of guy who had to learn it the hard way growing up all the time. Why? What happened? Oh, 
you name it, man. I got into MLMs. Everyone was telling me what's the, MLM, multi level marketing, like you know. Oh, uh, boy. oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and like everyone oh was telling me you're not good. It's not a good idea. Multi level marketing, oh, yeah, eh? yeah, like the OG Amway one, like fucking. Wow, oh yeah, look yeah. at you go. Oh yeah, I was I was 20 years old and wanted to own my own business, and I didn't realize that it was not my own business, and that I was just being a vampire. Mm -hmm. uh, oh man, there's. There are so many, like, that is my life, essentially. Like, I had to get very comfortable. The, the point where my life actually turned around from me being, like, feeling like the world is against me mm -hmm. to me feeling like I can actually do something in this life uh, was when I finally accepted that I'm not going to be right all the time, no matter how good it feels, and that if I fail at something, it doesn't mean that I'm any work, like any less of a person. And I should take that failure as an opportunity to learn. Hundred percent, failure is beautiful. Yeah, but a lot of people they don't know how to fail gracefully. They, no. If they fail, they're like, "Okay, that's it. I'm fucking done." They walk away from everything instead yeah. of being. Um, actually, the one good piece of advice from <laughs> the Amway MLM that I did, everyone gets these mentors, right? Okay. And my mentor told me this one thing, and it's the only thing that stuck with me. But it's that fail. It stands for first attempt in learning. First attempt in learning. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It makes sense, right? Hell yeah. yeah. And so, like, regardless of, like, you know, sorry, Mom, I'm really happy that you bought a $50 pack of granola bars Oof. from Amway. It was terrible. I know. You were right. But <laughs> that that saying is the one thing that I took from it that has actually followed me and actually helped me okay. a lot in life. Wow. Just that one little. First, at say it again for me. First attempt in learning. That's amazing. Yeah, because, like, I mean, like, think about it. If you're, uh, say you're trying to, first time ever, make your own barbecue sauce or something, right? Mm-hmm. You know it's not going to be amazing. No. But if you go into it thinking it has to be great. Yeah. And then it ends up being, like, not good. Are you just going to stop trying to make it or are you going to, you know? Figure out another way. Yeah, refine and yeah. go again, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I picked barbecue sauce for the I love that. There. I don't even like barbecue sauce. No? No, I hate that. Damn, I thought you said your family's from Virginia. What do you mean? I was raised by white folks. Well, I know, but even, I mean, come on. White people like barbecue. They do. I've never been a <laughs> fan of barbecue sauce. It's the closest we get to spicy, man. <laughs> it just has a gross taste to it. Really? Yeah. What kind of a, what kind of food are you most into? Like, what when you like... I love Italian. That's why I asked you earlier. Italian food? Italian. I, I do make good Italian food. I love a good fettuccine yeah. Alfredo. Okay. Blackened Some... chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I'm hungry. Yeah, man. My, uh, we, I just did a... Uh, what was it? Italian sausage. Um, I love Italian sausage. Spiced with like blistered Roma tomatoes. And like instead of using noodles though, I actually zoodled a zucchini. You zoodled a zucchini? Yeah, so it's called a zoodler. It's this little tool you can you twist the a zucchini into it. Okay. Trust me, it sounds sexual now, but when you find out the zucchini is getting split into a million little noodles after, it's a lot less That's a lot less arousing. Sexy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, damn. Yeah. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, no, it, like... My wife and I, we do Italian food. She's actually really good at making, like, German cuisine, too. Oh, wow. As well, she does, like, a really... Which, after my Oma passed away a few years ago, um, when we finally got back to Vancouver after the funeral, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was a little hung up on it. Because, like, my Oma, she had this whole book of family recipes. Wow. She's, okay. like, an old-time German woman. Like, she made, like, these kinds of... There's a thing called Linzer Tort. Takes, Linzer tort. Yeah, it takes three days to make. It's it's kind Gosh. of like like a like you know a, a pie with like the crisscross on it. Right? Yeah, that except the crust is made of like an almond paste, and like okay. you have to cure it in a cold box, like a freezer or something, for like two or three days. Whoa! And you have to let like the filling cure out. Probably anyhow, she was just a master of all things baking and like German cuisine and stuff, right? So I got home and I guess she had taken a photo of. Um, one of my Oma's dinner recipes. Aww, and she sweet. made me spatzly noodles and schnitzel with like rote coal and everything. Cute. And like it was the best thing. I love that. It, it was pretty good. Yeah. There's... Points for your girl. Oh, big time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. there's a lot more areas that she scores in outside of the cooking. Whoop! Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I know we're uncensored, but I'm just going to do her the favor and stop right there with that. Ah! We're sending you love. Yeah. Lots of love. Um, <laughs> That's great, man. So, like, give me some aspect as to, like, where where the creative spirit is played in your life. Like, um, you know, here at, I know we're on the Deficit Podcast, but it is through the Omnia Theater. Mm -hmm. And our whole mission is to, 
like awaken creativity within everybody mm-hmm. and be able to, you know, exhibit that and take the stigma away where people think that to be creative means you have to be an artist. Yeah. So where, where has creativity played in your life? I just love to make and do and create things Mm -hmm. and be in them. (laughs) And be in them. There you go. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, I don't know. I just, I get a thrill off of like making like a little skit or a short story or setting up a photo shoot for like Christmas or Halloween and just kind of like putting together some really great people, some artists to help make it all be one amazing project. I just... That gets me off. It gets me hot. I love it. Cool. Just to like create stuff and it have gets you pe- hot, eh? Yeah, I, yeah I, nice, fuck. I'm nice. steaming over here. <laughs> just and like to see other people enjoying the stuff that we've created and I've created and that I've poured my energy and sometimes finances into and just mm-hmm. hours to make to watch other people enjoy it brings me satisfaction. Nice. Yeah. And so, what? Where do you think? Um, in your in your opinion, what do you think creativity is? Like, I think creativity is just finding something that you're passionate about and not holding it in and just going for it and just doing it, whether it's like building stuff or setting things up or moving. I don't know. Whatever yeah. you're passionate about, yeah. be creative with it. And if you enjoy doing it, turn that into a business if you can. Cool. Well, you can. It's just are you willing to take the steps to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a complicated thing to navigate too. Like I, I've always been intimidated by the idea of running my own business because it wasn't even so much the running it part as much as it is the paperwork and like oh, navigating all the bureaucracy that mm. has to go through. I am terrible with that stuff. Really? Oh, just horrendous. I'm not the best. Yeah, I mean, but at least you got a business off the ground. Like I, True. I don't think if Ryan didn't find me, uh, no, no shot. Me? No, 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 don't no, doubt no. yourself though. I, I, I just know don't my strengths. Don't doubt yourself. I know my you strengths. Never know. I guess so. Yeah, you never know. You can do anything you want to do in this world, Mister. Well, well, someday we'll see. We'll see. I think my business will be probably something associated with just me talking to lots of people, which is what's going on so far. One hundred percent. Look yeah, where we are. Yeah, yeah it's not so, too bad. Yeah, you're doing well. <laughs> you're doing well. So I'm now. I want to ask you about like um, we're gonna get a little sexy here because you know oh, your gosh. Instagram is obviously full of <laughs> sexy pictures, right? Yes, it is. Um few years back yes obviously the body's an ongoing evolution right but you were you were you were more of a slender figure and now you're like (laughs) you've got like you've got a man chest like i I I saw these pictures i'm like my god what's your max bench oh i think like 210 210 yeah nice that's not that much i know it's not that much but it's more than me so that's that's nice well uh, yeah like 210 yeah Nice. Yeah. So, like, uh, what's your? Do you do like a push pull split? Like, give, give I me hate a rundown that on terminology. Stuff. Yeah. Push pull. I'm not pushing. I'm not pulling nothing. So you do arms, legs, different I do days. Arms, kind of legs, abs, biceps, triceps. Different days though. Like, what's? Uh, give me a give me I'll a five do, day run. Okay, so it's like I'll do like, I'll do like three. So I'll do like chest and arms and some tries, like chest, buys and tries. Nice. Because I'm at the gym for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Twice a day. So you might as well group twice a day. Yeah. Really? In the mornings, it's always cardio and abs. Nice. Yeah. And some glute because, you know, the cake needs to be given. The abs are what kill me. I I can. My abs are killing me right now. I literally did abs this morning and I'm like, ooh. I can do cardio like every time. Like I can, don't get me wrong, I can do core. I can Mm -hmm. do abs. But just the feeling you get when it's summertime and you take your shirt off and yes. you're looking down and just it's like, true. That, that is the nice part yeah, of it. That, that, I, I had a hot guy summer for the first time in 10 years this summer. I love that for you. I was you. pretty That's happy amazing. about it. Yeah, it's, the abs are definitely worth it. But man, so what, like, how do, you're just answering these questions so quickly. Like, oh, sorry. Yeah, like, tell me, give me your routine. So like, you used to do a bet, uh, chest buys and tries one day, right? Yeah, and then so, I'll do abs. No, then I'll do, like, legs and, like, I'll do like all legs, like all the whole leg. Yeah, yeah. So on your chest buys and tries day, right? Yeah. Give me your your oh. general sets. What do you do? Like I'm what really exercises? bad with the machine names. Yeah. Well, I don't need a machine names, okay. but your um, exercises. Okay. Like I'll do like definitely like what is it? I I don't even know. I'm the worst. Show me the movement. Okay. What are so you doing? I'll be like on my back, so you know. Bench press. Bench press. Yeah, yeah. I'll do like this this one, like you're yeah. pulling in, like you're. Kind of like flies or yeah, whatever? Yeah, flies. Okay. Yeah. On a machine, though? Yeah, yeah on the okay, machine. Cool. Everything's on a machine. Nice. Um, And then I like to do, like, push-ups, but, like, 
on a bar. So it's like you're on a bar and you're like pushing yourself up body weight. It is much better for your wrists to do push-ups with a grip of some kind. Yeah. Yeah, and like sure. you can just feel it. Yeah. I just feel it. Do you go mm-hmm. wide grip and narrow grip and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Absolutely. What you, what's your favorite body part to work? Booty, glutes. You like the booty, yes. eh? Leg day? Oh my it's god. Giving. This man does not skip leg day. One hundred percent not. These thighs are thick. Hell yeah, man. Jesus. That's <laughs> that's a first. I've never heard anyone tell me I love leg day, but that's that's great. Well, let me clarify. Okay. <laughs> I There's don't love leg day. I love glute. Day. Oh, okay, okay. Legs and glutes, that. they're connected on the same bo- like, portion, but like when you're working booty, I just do exercises that strictly target booty. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. I, I get you there. I like the deep squats a lot more than I like like quad flies. Like I do like leg lifts yeah. and like fire hydrants, um, nice. clamshells. Wow. Yeah, for I, booty. Wait, what's a fire hydrant? Fire hydrants are like you're on like all fours. Okay. <laughs> you have a resistance band around above your knees. Okay. And you open your leg like open, hold, down. Oh. Yeah. So that gets a lot of the side glued, I guess. Yeah, right? you're burning. Yeah. You're burning, and it just feels so good. I should probably try that one out. You I should. Got, I've got like tragically weak hips. They're like, oh god. Oh yeah, they're bad. Not tragically weak. Uh, oh, big time. <laughs> they're they're like, I work out all the time, but I I never seem to get enough access to like actual hip exercises. Do them and do some hip rotations to warm up first. Yeah, it's, you know it's the hip rotation where it's like one, then you kind of like go back. Like, yeah, Ew. I've got that little. It's called snapping hip syndrome. Or like the tendon kind of runs over the bone. It doesn't mm. hurt, but it's like this weird little popping sensation. Oh, I'm weird. out. It's annoying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But okay. like I, I try to. I've, I've been told by multiple physiotherapists that I have to start exercising my hips more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. So maybe I'll have to get that going. Some hip thrusts. So you go. You, you have five days a week, two days off. I or? tend to do like I like to do like six times a week. Six times a week. Yeah. And do you? So do you? Uh, do you have like a? Do you put your rest day on the same day in the six Honestly, days every time? Or? This might sound bad, but I don't really like a rest day. No? There's always something to be done. I know everyone's going to freak out. Like, oh, but your body needs to rest. No, because, like, it does. But, like, a rest day is, like, going for a run and sitting in my sauna. Yeah, I mean, that still counts as Is rest. that a rest day? Especially with sauna. You have a sauna? Yeah. Ooh, nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Have you, do you have you kept track at all of like the crazy health studies that have come out for saunas and stuff? No. Why? What's oh, up? they are so good for you. Really? Oh, they're so good. Okay, for good. Because yeah, yeah. I have one, so I use it all the time. They just finished this uh, study out in Finland with this doctor. Her name is Susanna Soberg, um, and she just finished the longest uh, and widest um, study on cold and heat exposure and what it does to the human body. Interesting. And so people who can sauna three days a week or more mm-hmm. have, in, within the first week, experience a 40% drop in their risk of having heart disease. Mm. Um, it also helps with your metabolism. Okay. It boosts human growth hormone in your body. It boosts love testosterone. Oh, hormone. yeah. You got to get them good hormones in there. <laughs> it's all about the, to get them juices. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually read of um that he I don't know if you heard Andrew Huberman but he's got like no. this podcast and he talks about biohacks for the most part like it, okay. it's a lot of medical experts who come on and tell you things you can do to like make your body change in certain ways and like oh, like to help with like mental health and it's really actually really helpful I've I've been listening to his podcast for a long time and okay I gotta check him out I actually have a I have a cold plunge at my house now a you little. do oh yeah see I've never done one of those but I really want to try it do you like them I. Not when I get in. So but you don't like it. I, I, it's, I actually am a cold water nut. I have always loved jumping into cold water. Um, I don't know what it is because like, I do feel uncomfortable about, about it, about but that. you're so refreshed afterwards. And did you know that a refreshed? cold- Refreshed? I'm yeah. cold after that. What are you talking about? When you do a cold plunge, um, your body, your brain will immediately, like once you get out, your brain pops off a 2.5x, like 250% increase in dopamine. Okay. So you actually get the same amount of dopamine secretion from a cold plunge as you do from doing a line of cocaine. Oh. Yeah. Wild, right? And then oh. it kicks on like, <laughs> yeah, it kicks on these, uh, your body has to warm itself up. So it kicks off this metabolic process to heat mm-hmm. you. And then actually, if you do it 
for a total of like 11 minutes throughout the week. So you can do like a minute, two minutes a okay. day or whatever, right? Then your metabolism will get like boosted. Your natural testosterone levels are also boosted. Wow. And your brown fats work better. And I guess your brown, it's this whole thing. I'm but... all brown fat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see much fat there. Brown. I'm sucking in wrong camera. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> Same here, man. That's, that's why we got the button shirts on, right? 100%. That's why yeah. we're wearing black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't let them know our secrets, man. No, hundred percent not. Yeah. Well, everyone knows black is slimming. But yeah, the sauna thing—that's really good too. Like, if... wait, but let's, let me go back to this cold plunge. Do you buy a certain tank for this, or do you just like put ice in the bathtub? So at first, it was just ice in my bathtub. Yeah, okay. At first, um, and then like I just got tired of having to fill up my bathtub with freezing, like, cause my tub, the tap is not two different taps, right? Okay. It's the one. So uh, if you okay. want more water pressure, the water is going to get warmer. Mm-hmm. So I had to leave it on like a trickle. Oh, and it'd take okay. me two and a half hours to fill my tub up. Damn. And then I gotta dump all the ice in and then yeah. like lay down. But I got this uh like new recover thing. And it's basically like an inflatable tiny above ground pool, practically. Okay. It's about this high off the ground. Okay. And I fill that once a week. I got a little a little fucking pump off Amazon, like a motor pump that yeah. I can just like fill like pull the water out of my tub and out to my balcony and like oh, wow, okay. thing, right? It works really well. And then I Dump all this ice in it, cover it up, it stays cold. Um, wow. But yeah, I start every day with one now. And Every day? Yeah. You did one today? Yeah, yeah this morning. Yeah. They, they, Man, the amount of energy I have on a daily basis wow. is nuts. And the one thing I'm missing right now still, though, is a sauna because that's another half of the equation. The, Get it? You go to on Amazon. It was like I bought mine right from the manufacturer. Bad mistake. Because it was $500 from the manufacturer. It was $200. Ninety dollars on Amazon. Really? It's just this like portable sauna that is like collapsible. You just stick your head out the top. Oh, I know the one you're talking. I've seen those mm. before. Yeah, they I, work so well. I've been looking at getting one. of Your those. hands go yeah. out the side, like out of the little front like slits, so you can like do your phone stuff. Yeah, and, and those too. little pockets too. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. such a vibe. They had this uh, study a little while ago. They showed that like um, if you can do, there's like this like Iron Man fucking sauna routine that you can do where it, you go into a sauna it has to be at least 100 to 110 degrees oh and if you sit in it for half an hour and then get out for 10 to 20 minutes and air dry mm -hmm. then back in for another half hour and then out so basically if you substitute one of your gym days mm -hmm. with just this sauna routine yeah. um you only do it once a week because it the effects will drop off dramatically, I guess, if you try to do it too much. Okay. But if you do that, it, like, skyrockets your growth hormone and, like, your testosterone and your Whoa. Yeah, it's supposed to be, like, this super boost for your, your body. Like, it okay, really so helps. I need to do that then. I guess so, yeah. I mean, if you've got it, you might as well try it out. Yeah, I'll try that it's out. It's supposed to be crazy helpful. I like to boost whatever I can boost. Oh, I feel you, man. Yes. <laughs> you <especially, you> know, <laughs> and, you know, we're both under 5'10", so it, it yes. you know, the boosts are important. It's <laughs> People don't know that I lie on my audition tapes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Trust and believe. If I was to walk into like a, like a, a booking and I'm like, say I'm 5'10", and I get in there, I'm like 5'7", they'll be like, hmm, <laughs> let's rethink this. You just got to get them lifts, man. Yo, I know. Yeah, the Tom Cruise I secret. Did, but I, whole... I, off Amazon, there was these lifts, so I literally bought them, but they felt so uncomfortable. Yeah, I They bet. felt so uncomfortable. Makes me wonder how women can do it with their platform heels and stuff. Honestly. It's just like so painful. I can't. That's nuts. I cannot. So have you... You don't ever try wearing like um, heels or anything like that. Like even I've done drag ones. Oh, I'm not a fan. No, no, not a fan. No, You're... I did drag on my reality show. It was an episode, but fuck, I looked hideous. Yeah, fucking awful. So did well, I. they made us yeah. do it, and we had 20 minutes, and like okay. I don't know how to do no fucking makeup on myself. Like that's insane. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And then they had these yeah. janky heels, and I'm walking like a duck, like okay, a Bambi duck, like. Oh my god, it was awful. So when you're, uh, do you do the bulk and cut thing with your gym routine? Like, are you? Yeah, yeah. I just finished my bulk, which nice. I did it. I I messed up. I did my bulking in the summertime when I was. Oh yeah, but yeah. as just life got really hard, and I started eating, so I made the decision just to do my bulk then. Yeah, I mean, so now why not? I'm in the cutting season. Like my my stomach's probably grumbled like ten times because I haven't. I've only had like. One little salad today. Oh, I feel that. Yeah. That's tough, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, but then I'm going to have some food after this, so. Where are you gonna, what, are you kind of, what kind of food? Oh, you already told me Italian food. So, I'm not having no pasta right no, now. I guess no, you're cutting, right? Mm -mm. So just like straight Chicken protein and veg. veggies. Yeah. Yeah. You ever do fish? I hate seafood. Really? Yeah, I hate it. Oh, damn. Disgusting. Man. But I do like a fish, I won't lie. Like, 
I like tuna from a can, white flaked. Hey man, I love. Uh, I'm with you on that we one. Like a nice tuna yeah. melt. Ooh, damn. And then I like I like white fish. I like white fish. So like a catfish is my favorite. Ooh. A cod. Halibut. Halibut. Mm-hmm. Halibut can sometimes be a little smelly. Yeah. I don't like any smell. Mm. Yeah, I mean, fish is the smelly food. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And if it smells fishy, I can't do it. But like those, like kind of like three or four like types of fish I'll eat. Okay. Preferably battered. But if they're not, like have them nicely. Okay. S- what is it? Grilled, sauteed. I don't fucking know. Seared? Seared. There you go. There we go. Yeah, I can make myself, I can, I can make some pretty good like fish fillets and shit like that. Okay. You gotta sear them. The sear is important. You gotta okay. get that crisp on the outside. Okay. Yeah. Cook me fish sometime. Fuck yeah, dude. You come over. We'll do a dinner, we'll do a dinner party. It'll cool. Be great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm down. What do you got the place for, man? It'll yes. Yo, um, I'm rolling through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get me more on this fitness thing, though. So you do your cardio thing and all that. Yeah. Like, what is um what does Lachlan Wells say to somebody who is looking to get into exercising again. Like, what What do you think? Do is the, it. Okay, but what What do they start with? Like, I think I'm, finish. I'm Joe Schmo. I've never been in a gym. Wasn't a fan of working out when I was younger. Read a lot of books or whatever, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not, not a fitness guy, right? I want to go exercise. Where do I start? Like, what, what do I have to incorporate if I want to lose 20 pounds, let's say? Cardio. Cardio. Get on that treadmill. Get on that stair climber. Get on the elliptical. Okay. Don't overdo it your first time. Mm-hmm. Just start. And mm-hmm. then observe people, observe people in the gym. So that's how I learned how to do all of the machines and all of the different workouts because I would watch how someone did it. I got it through people watching. Yeah. Oh, cool. But not like the creepy way, y'all. Don't be creepy out there now. Like, don't we can don't tell. be the gym creeper. Yeah. Mm-mm. The guy with the but big glasses. But just like go and just observe how people are doing it. Like mm. I wouldn't know how to do half the things at the gym if I didn't watch other people do them. And yeah. how did I watch them? When I was on the treadmill trying to lose some weight. Because mm-hmm. then I knew once I lost the weight, and I knew like if I was gonna start doing like certain ab exercises or like back exercises, like they'll show after I've lost a little bit of weight. Mm-hmm. So watch other people, see how they do it, and then just kind of jump into it. Go to the gym when it's not too busy if you're a little nervous. Yeah. Because you know what? Like when I first started working out, I was so embarrassed. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. My body doesn't look like theirs. That gym anxiety is very real. One hundred percent. Absolutely. But just once you start getting the hang of it and you start to see the change in your body, it's going to be your motivation to just keep going. Yeah. You just have to start. You just have to start. And I feel like if you're trying to lose weight, cardio, cardio, cardio. I've lost 20 pounds in a month doing cardio. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that... You too, though. Yeah, it's true. That's true. I was trying to focus on you, but it is, it is true. Yeah, like... Like... The second what Lachlan said, cardio is key. Like... Mm-hmm. And it doesn't necessarily have to be just running or something. No. Just keep your heart rate up and yeah. move, right? Like, for me, I, I joined an MMA gym. Oh, um, right come on now. Yeah, I used to be a, uh, I used to be a wrestler in high school, qualified nationals and like um, I did like um triathlon training. Did you wear like the singlet? That. Oh, you know it. Oh, yeah. I love it. And it looks <laughs> just as tiny and cold as you think it did. It, My favorite. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was uh I I did I did that, and I did Taekwondo. I did martial arts a lot when I was younger. It was a oh, okay. big aspect of my thing. I was a big Dragon Ball fan, so... The Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I want to be Goku, right? I'm going to okay. go, yeah, go kick things and stuff. Yes. But, um, yeah, I, I, through my 20s, I never got into anything recreational for the most part. And like, I was like, I really missed being on the mats. I missed okay. wrestling. I missed combat. And yeah. I'm not I'm not a fighting kind of person. I don't get in fights. Aww. I don't like the feeling when I get in fights. I know, I can tell. No, oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> you're a, so, you're a lover. You and you're a, you're a talker. You're not a like, yeah, a fist fighter. I will try and diffuse any situation with my mouth before I <laughs> <laughs> Me too. That did sound just like it sounded, didn't it? I did just say that. <laughs> I stand by my words. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I, I figured, you know, it would help me get back in shape and something I like to do. Look, at, I, I'm i I'm just terrible for that, okay? Oh, you're I so stumble funny. a lot. I can't help it. That was perfect. Uh, hopefully it makes for good content. You it's know? fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Am I androgynous enough for you? So. <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, no, no, I feel you. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it, was, it was something about the, like, for one, boxing or... Muay Thai or any of those things, the the cardio is nuts in those, right? Oh, I You're bet. Sweating your balls off, and like yeah. the other part of it was, like I guess you could say, in like a traditional man kind of sense. I just I didn't want to, like I, I don't see myself getting in violent conflicts ever, at least not by my own accord. But if sure. that kind of thing ever happened, 
I didn't want to not know how to handle that situation. True. You know, like yeah. if, if I'm out with my wife and we're just walking in some, you know, it does happen where of course. people just come up and start instigating shit. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get hit in the face and not know how to react. You have a really pretty nose. I wouldn't want to see that broken. Oh, man. Been so close to broken so many times. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Like, like I thought it broke it a couple times. I'm surprised it's still straight. Actually, it's so nice. Like Thank I have you. a great side profile of it. It looks amazing. Really? Oh yeah, wow! Look at that. Jesus. Yeah. I thought, yeah. But um. Yeah. So when I did that, it was that just it just shed off. I, I lost the first month of doing MMA. I lost uh, 16 pounds. That's crazy. And, yeah, and then wow. like just dropped uh, 35 ish. By the time May hit, I think Maybe you're looking yes. good. When I when I when I when you opened the door and I saw you, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, thanks, like, yeah, look at you. Not a lot of people have seen me because I've just been, you know, doing my thing, right? No, you look like, amazing. Yeah, thank yeah, you. you I really appreciate good. that. I I I know you know that I say the same about you, but you I do know. look amazing too. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just honestly jealous of your chest. I've been trying to grow my chest for. Can you so bounce long. it? I I can, but they're not nearly as big. See? Oh, not there you nearly. go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I we see really, the movement. Yeah. But see, like, you can see yours. Mine is like, you're like looking at a little ripple in the water. You know, you're just kind of Stop. For it. No, yeah, you're yeah. not. I want looks... the wakes. I don't want the ripples, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be, it's a matter of time. It'll I come. think you look amazing. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, when, like, flattery aside and stuff, let's get back to helping this guy out with his, uh, his weight loss and getting healthy again. Okay. So honestly, my tips for losing weight. Yeah. Cardio, mm-hmm. eat healthy. And don't overeat. And eat at certain times. Yeah. I like to do intermittent fasting. The mm-hmm. first time I ate today, because I'm trying to lose weight right now, was 2 o'clock. Yeah. Protein shake. I Literally. Yeah, I started at 2, yeah. And it's like, I went to the gym, and I went to a spin class, all fasted, didn't eat, just water. First meal was at 2 o'clock. Shit, man, it's too bad you're all the way over on the North Shore. Otherwise, I'd be coming to your classes with you and stuff. I need a buddy to get into cardio stuff with more. I, yeah, you should mm-hmm. come. It's a bit of a drive for me, but, you know, Luckily, maybe someday. we drive. That's true. That's true. You know? Okay. Excuses. I, I, excuses. I, I, okay, maybe we'll do a couple of days a week where I actually come do some mm-hmm. cardio with Lachlan. Yeah, yeah. Come on Sounds through. Good. <laughs> I am I am hoping to get into a bit of a uh like a gonzo approach to this whole podcast thing where I kinda come on and film people in their day to day life. So maybe we could do something like that. A day in the life of Lachlan Wells. Yeah. Come yeah. on down. Let's call it cardio with Lock Talks. Right? Okay. Yeah, something like that. Love it. I'll give you inspiration while I'm running on a treadmill. That'd be great. That'd awesome. Be great. And so um do you think Weight loss or just being healthier is more simple than what a lot of people seem to think it is. Like, because you look online and there is just miles and miles of different fitness influencers telling you to eat this, not eat that, do this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Is all that really necessary or is there just like a real basic thing to stick to? It's unnecessary. Do what's good for you. Yeah. But just... If you're serious about losing weight, yeah, cut out your carbs. Have a cheat meal on the weekend, mm-hmm. and don't indulge. Just have, like, instead of having the full pizza, have like two slices because yeah. you've earned it that week. But when you're going through the week, eat clean. Don't eat past seven. Intermittent fast. Drink your water. Take your vitamins. Yeah, get that cardio all the way up. And after you do cardio, do not eat for the first three hours afterwards because your body is an act. Your body is so active at that time, burning fat and burning calories, mm-hmm. that if you put something into it, then you're just kind of messing up. Yeah, you're negating the effects of what will happen. 100%. After. A lot of people seem to think that it's once you're done cardio, the process is done. But no. your body is still working for another few hours. After, 100%. Right? Yeah, because it's got to make the repairs. It's got to make sure your body mm-hmm. can get back to normal. So yeah. it's burning all these fats and carbs and exactly. helping you restore yourself. Yeah. And it's really easy to lose weight. You just have to be consistent and you just have to want to. Yeah, yeah, and that's that really is the key. I mean, I wanted to lose weight so many times, and I yeah. just never stayed consistent, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the work that we do is kind of it's insane, a key and that's why I'm right? on my cutting journey now because these last like four months on the show, fuck, I ate everything at craft service. Oh, I was just a mess. It's so deadly, so deadly. I mean, the food's always like there's always something delicious, so good. Right? Yeah. Ooh. I had my sausage rolls every morning. I had Ooh, my like sausage rolls every morning. They had sausage rolls. In? Yeah, so God good, damn, man. Yeah, and then like breakfast burritos, mm-hmm. and then craft service had all of the. We failed the body for these last four months. Well, I mean, as long as you got enough protein, right? You're yeah, just, you're just bulking, right? Just acquiring. It's just mass. bulk. That's yeah. what I say. It's just yeah. bulk. Yeah. And now we're just cut. Yeah, wicked. Mm-hmm. Very cool, man. Um, what do you uh, what do you think are the things in life that 
people should be looking to most? Like as far as your health, your hobbies, you know, Mm -hmm. what do you think is, I guess, the most meaningful thing to focus on as a human being? What do you think? What's the most meaningful thing to focus on? Yeah, like if if you're a, yeah, I guess, yeah. what, What would you say, would the world be a better place if humans focused on X in their lives? I think there would be a better place if people focus on how to just be happy. Yeah. People are so miserable in this world mm-hmm. because so much is going on that's out of their control. You can only change what you can control. And the one thing you can control is how you are going to live your life. Yeah. Be happy. Not everything's going to be perfect. Not everything's right in this world. Not everything's right with you, your situations, your family, your friends. Be happy. It's easier said than done, but you can find happiness. And I feel like I've gone through some hard things in life, but I'm happy. I live every day to the best of my abilities with energy and love and compassion towards others. I'm a lover of life. I'm a lover of new experiences and people. That makes me happy. So I, I'm i a happy person. That's and I good. feel like people will live a better life, a longer life, and just be more pleasant to be around if they're just happy. Don't be fake happy. Find what makes you happy that brings the happiness out of you. What do you think people should stay away from to stay happy or to help be happy more consistently? Drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Anyone, any any drugs in particular? Anything that's not marijuana. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Good call. All yeah. right. Nice. Nice. I think, I think, Lachlan. Yes. I think we've, we have gotten to the end here. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at that. But <laughs> I'm not, I'm, we're not quite finished yet. I want you to look in one of these cameras. Okay. And give a shout out to whoever you want to <sighs> give a shout out to. Shout your handle out. Okay. Tell people what you're doing. Tell them what you want them to see. Okay. And then give them some kind of magical quote to finish their day off with. Oh, no pressure. All right, I know. Okay, I'm going to look into this one right here. Okay. What's up, y'all? My name is Lachlan Wells. You can find me on Instagram at Lachlan J. Mack. I have some cool things coming up for the brand and some really awesome auditions, so hopefully we book something soon. I know we will because it's all in God's plan. And just, Yeah. Just know what in life is for you will not pass you. You have the power to create whatever you want in this world. Just keep on hustling, keep on grinding, and I know you'll get there. Alrighty, thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody, for watching The Deficit. This has been a great time with Lachlan Wells, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Peace. Had an old dog, he was too old to bark and Took them all rambles off leash in the park and People might look, but they never remark I had an old dog, he was too old to bark I had a little car I could drive all day Look good in the sun, never fade away didn't drive much when the light went away I had a little car I could drive all day Sometimes I see what's going on and on and on I take a drink but it's too strong I follow that road till it takes me away And then I put it in a jar for a sunny Had a lot of love and it filled up my soul it Made me so happy, made me lose control and Gave it all away and I still felt whole I had a lot of love and it filled up my soul I haven't had a care since I set myself free I Cast off chains in my misery Face to the light, now it's too bright to see I haven't had a care since I set myself free Sometimes I see what's going on and on and on I take a drink, but it's too strong I follow that road till it takes me away And then I put it in a jar for a sunny
Sometimes I see what's going on and on and on I take a drink but it's too strong I follow that road till it takes me away And then I put it in the jar for a sunny day Sometimes I see what's going on and on and on and on I take a drink but it's too strong Follow that road till it takes me away And then I put it in a jar for a sunny day I had an old dog, he was too old to bark I Took him on rambles off leash in the park People might love, but they never read I had an old dog, was too old to bark. I had an old dog, he was too old to bark. You're a, you're a lover, you're, and you're a, you're a talker. You're not a, like yeah, a fist fighter. Yeah, I will try and diffuse any situation with my mouth before I... <laughs> Me too. That did sound just like it sounded, <laughs> didn't it? I did just say that. I stand by my words. <laughs>